mate, I'm pretty average. I'm 34, father of four, work full time. I'm on under 70 grand a year. My partner works part time, so we're we're basically a, a one income household. Yeah, I'm not anyone special or, you know. If you told me that over the next 12 months, I was gonna get four grand back in my pocket, why wouldn't you do it? We're five from five. This is the shortest price horse we've had all day. Let's load up because clearly, you know, we're on a run today and it fucked up and it cost me money. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's lesson learned. Yesterday was three months since my first bet and that ticked me to, to just over 3,300 in profit total. I lost my sports bit account. I literally, for probably that whole weekend, I had like an existential crisis. I was like, I've just lost. How did I just lose the biggest bookmaker? How am I going to manage things? Because sports bets every Saturday, yeah. we've got promos on pretty well every race yeah. that we tip into. As far as I'm concerned, my, my journey ends when I lose all my accounts, right? Off I go into the sunset. I'm sitting here talking to you now, and it's like speaking to a different kind of person. <laughs> it's just a total mindset shift. I want fuck you money. I went back and watched the three month pod. I go back and I look at myself in that podcast and I'm like, I want to reach through the screen and just smack this bloke. <laughs> I would not be in the position that I'm in if my mindset had not changed around this community and through, through match betting and through what's happened, right? I wouldn't have taken that chance. I wouldn't be in this position. I never thought about that sort of stuff before the mentorship program. Here we are again, boys. That's it, 100%. <laughs> so today we have probably the most well-known, if not close to the most well-known member of the community with us again, Platinum Pete. So welcome, mate. Thanks for having me again, boys. Always fun. Welcome, Always mate. is. Looking forward to this. We obviously got JP and Lenny in here as well, for those that aren't watching this on YouTube. Before we dive into anything, for those that aren't aware, this is the fifth podcast that we've recorded with Pete. So we filmed one on day one, yep. day 30, day 90, day 365 or thereabouts. And today's yep. about day 700, yeah, about just, just under. So there are podcasts for you to watch uh, so that you know what's got Pete to this spot. They're all linked in the description, whether you're listening to this on Spotify, watching it on YouTube or listening on Apple Music, they're in the description. Would we'll definitely recommend watching those first to get a better sense of where you've come from and where we've got to now and kind of what you're looking to do in the future. So to start it off, we obviously have heaps to catch up on and, and talk about. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> but I wanted to start off with a, a quote from yourself from the last podcast. Okay. And that was, my story is very different to those kids in the community you see making 50 to 100 grand a year from their match betting. So let's kick it off and discuss that comment to start. Yeah. Um, so at the time, I absolutely thought that that was going to be kind of my story and my journey. Um, I thought this was just going to be kind of one bloke with, you know, one kind of pathway to go down. Um, you know, how can you do it part time? Can you do it while raising kids? Can you do it working full time? What sort of money can you make reasonably while still being sustainable, while still following and, you know, being able to just put a couple extra dollars in your pocket, basically. Um, and I'm sure we'll get into it. You know, there's a bit of a timeline for us to go through over the, the last couple of months. JP got onto me about like, no mate, there's an opportunity here to absolutely max this out. Once Lenny got on board, you know, that opportunity obviously grew and we'll, we'll talk about the mentorship program. Um, there was a conversation that I had with Lenny, which, you know, we were just talking about like, I don't know how much of the footage you guys have or, or are gonna put up um, that really kind of broke me in terms of, like the opportunities that that match betting presents that I maybe wasn't um, that I wasn't willing to kind of accept or look at, um, and now I'm heading towards being one of those kids that's going to make fifty or a hundred grand this year, <laughs> and I like I legitimately cannot believe that that's where we're at. Yeah, that's sick. I, the reason I wanted to start with that quote is because, and I rewatched our twelve month podcast yesterday yeah. and the vibe that I got towards the middle and end of that podcast was that you felt like your match betting journey was kind of coming to an end you mentioned a lot about like burnout you were starting to lose a few of the big accounts and you kind of thought like yeah. once that's it the the platinum peak journey is kind of finished um, yeah. and that's why I wanted to start with that quote because that is super common for guys and girls that do reach that 12 to 18 month mark they make their 15 to 20 grand and they do feel the exact same way 
that you felt towards the end of that podcast. And now that we have you here almost a year on from that, what, what, why are you here and why haven't you stopped? Or like, why didn't you give up? Like, why is the journey, the Platinum Pete journey still going? Um, I mean, the, the big thing for me and what I guess what I want to talk about today is it's just a total mindset shift, right? Like uh, JP is very, very good at this. Um, I mean this in the nicest way, Lenny, like Lenny's a fucking cyborg, right? Like Lenny's, Lenny's just a robot. It's like, here's the opportunity. Here's how you are going to get there. Like whether you like it or not, I'm, we are going to drag you kicking and screaming to get it done. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and these boys were just both at me where it's like, mate, you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. Um, and it's funny, like you talk about losing the big accounts. I mean, like the, the first big update that happened right after we did the 12 month pod, that was sort of July, August last year. Um, September came around, you know, the first kind of story I'll cover off September came around. Um, I remember the day it was the day, uh, St Kilda played the giants in the AFL finals. I was out with a bunch of mates and I was just like, oh, you know, I'm happy to be muggy today, right? Like I'm here with my mates. Hey boys, give me your best multi for the day. I'll chuck 10 bucks on it, right? There's five of us, you know, 50 bucks. Who cares? It's a bit of fun with the boys, right? This is the typical gamblers sort of thing, but whatever. And so I'd already put the sports system tips on for the day. So I know I'd used my promos. I'm covered. I'm all good. And so I loaded up on my TAB account, right? Because I had plenty of cash in there. And so I put on like four multis on TAB. And one of them was just this insane like 20 legger, right? It was like Toby Bedford to kick three goals, Rowan Marshall to kick a goal, Cooper Sharman to kick a goal in the first quarter or something, right? And it was paying like 80 something to one. And the Saints got pumped and we looked like crap and so kind of stopped following the game and we were just tracking the multi, multi, multi. And we get to the end of the game and the multi is a couple of possessions short, right? So I think we had like Rowan Marshall for 25 touches. He had 24 and... Sam Hay- uh, Sam Taylor to get 15 and he had 14. But TAB had another promotion going where if your player fell one possession short, you got paid. And I didn't know that. I, I hadn't paid any attention to it. And so when I got home that night, I look at my account and it's blown up to like four and a half grand. And I'm like, what? what? It's like, oh, I've just won 800 bucks on this multi. And the first thing I did was panic. I was like, oh shit, like I'm, I need to like get some money out of this account, right? Like I need to do the typical mug thing. I've had a big win. So I I go on the NRL, I'm putting some two ways on. I go to the EPL or the A-League, whatever soccer was on that night. I'm betting on like the horses over in Perth and I cleared five, 600 bucks out of it. That's fine. Had a couple of bonuses in there. So Sunday comes around, I turn my bonuses over. My bonuses win the accounts back up to like four and a half grand. And I'm like, oh no, like this is not looking good, but take a breath, you're all fine. Don't to stress. clarify, they always were hedged the first. Correct, correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> obviously, yeah. They're all they're all hedged, right? I'm, I'm doing the right thing. Um, Monday morning, we go on holiday with the the family and people that follow me on Insta would have seen, you know, I was up in, in Marimbula last year making units while going for a walk on the beach. <laughs> I actually remember that. And we're in the car driving up. It's about an eight-hour drive. And we're about two hours into the drive. I get an email from Tab. Hey, Pete, thanks very much. You're clearly a pretty switched-on punter. We don't think you're going to get promos anymore. And I remember posting in the group, I was like, this is it. Like, I'm done. I just talked to you boys about how I lost my sports bet account. I don't have sports bet. Now I've just lost tab. My immediate reaction is, well, that's like the end of the journey, right? Like, this is this is me coming to the end. It's inevitable. I posted this in the group. And JP reached out to me and he goes, mate, what the fuck? Like, you're not done. There's 80 bookies in this country plus the other opportunities that we've already talked about. This is now your time to take advantage of this. And I spent most of the journey kind of moping about it. And I was like, nah, look, I said I wasn't going to do it. I'm not going to push ahead with it. I don't know if I have the time. I don't really understand how it works. Like I'd convinced myself that it was kind of one and done. And so we go to the hotel. I'm sitting on the couch. My missus can see that I'm upset. And she's like, which one was it that you lost? And I'm like, oh, it's TAB. It's one of the big ones, blah, blah, blah. She's like, okay, cool. And then the kids have gone to bed. She comes home. She sits next to me and she opens up her phone and she's like, do you want to just use my one? <laughs> and I'm like, what have you done? She's like, oh, I signed up. What are the other ones that you've lost? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean you've signed up? Is this a conversation that you'd had previously? <laughs> Not at all. No. 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 But so sh- she just saw that kind of it made you happy. It was something that you were chasing. You are making money. Like, what do you think it was? So we've spoken about it since then. She looked at it as 
if losing one or two accounts meant that I was going to stop completely, then why not just keep going, right? Like, why why take one or two kind of you know near near KO punches when the opportunity to get back up? And just to keep to clarify, you were fully in that mindset of like nearly quitting. Like I remember, I was one hundred percent. I remember yeah. your comment in the Discord, and I can literally like feel your stress through the screen. Mm-hmm. So you're like, yeah. yeah, nearly done. Yeah, I I had basically convinced myself I was done because I'm lo- I, I was looking at what I had left at the time and I was like awesome I've got like a bunch of these smaller bookies that'll give me coverage back to second and you know the occasional third or maybe fourth but only on like 20 or 25 dollars like how much money am I actually going to make out of this what's the point like am I really gonna am I really gonna spend my whole Saturday sitting there chasing like you know 20 20 dollar units uh, with coverage only back to second like that's not what we're about that's not how it works it's not going to be sustainable i don't have sports but i don't have tab how do i follow the sports system i'm done right like fully i'm i'm done at this point this is september last year you've just reeled off about every single <laughs> excuse known to man that i've seen in well, every single coaching channel and dm yeah. and no, but it's, ever it's like, limiting ever. beliefs yeah. because we until the last six to nine months haven't really spoken about the opportunities outside of that yeah and now like that's all fair because you were clueless yeah it's fully limiting beliefs you believe this you don't know this exists yeah like you fully just don't know how that's happening so I, I don't think it was so much that i didn't i didn't know about it it's that for the most part in the community any kind of discussion about taking it yeah. further was not frowned upon but no sort we of, didn't allow it sort of re- yeah it was kind of yeah. restricted it was like look we don't talk about it there's we're not set up the community's not set up properly to support people in how to do it and Spot on. if you go out and try and do it and you know i said this to jp when jp first approached me about the mentorship like my first reaction was but mate i've heard all the horror stories of people like oh, i had you know six grand in this account and i got stat decked and it's gone yeah. and i'm like oh my gosh like because at that point i'd made maybe 20 grand And I'm like, oh my gosh, if I had six grand in an account and it disappeared, like that's a quarter of everything that I've made. Like, and if that just disappeared on me, not thinking bigger picture, not thinking, right, you know, it's not, you're not losing six out of 20, you're losing six out of 150 or whatever it is. But it was those sorts of thoughts that had me kind of scared and really hesitant to do it. Um, So that was like October, November. Yeah. And kind of, you would just went through, you just floated through. I feel like you just floated through for a couple of months, like scraping by, but pretty much as Lenny said, like, the tone of every conversation that you were involved in discord personal was you were done. Yeah. You were done. So, so then it rolls around to January start of the year and old mate JP nails you again. Yeah. What, what, what was, what was that conversation about and what, what, what happened there that switched this flick? So a really big part of it. (laughs) That switched the flick. Um, (laughs) So a really big part of it is kind of, a combination of what happened in my personal life. So right around the same time, so about September, October, um, the the team that I was working for, there was a, like a big restructure in the business that I was, I was working at. Um, the team that I managed essentially got merged into like another department. I had nothing to do. I was getting paid pretty well, right? But I spent a week in that office and basically got to the bottom of YouTube, right? Like I was sitting in a, co- like in a corner office just doing stone cold nothing. And I was talking to like my manager, I was talking to the ops manager. I'm like, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? They said, oh, you know, we'll find something, we'll find something. Don't stress, you're all good. And I just couldn't handle it, right? Like, like I need to be doing something. So I, I took a bit of a risk and went and got another job. And like, it's further away from home. It's more hours, it was less money, but it was an opportunity to like potentially step into something. And one of the people that we had there was a a guy named Rowan who came in as the general manager and he kind of sat me down and almost like JP and and you guys do talk to me about mindset kind of around the office, right? And and Tommy, you know this, I used to be your manager a long time ago. As a manager, I was always very much like, look, if you're having trouble doing it, I will go and do it for you, right? I'll help you out. I will jump in on the front line with my team because I feel like that's the best way to be a leader. And the mindset shift that kind of changed changed here was stop being the captain of the team, stop trying to lead by example and start being the coach, right? Like that's the mindset shift, right? That's how you're going to go from being, you know, from earning 60 70 80 grand a year as a team leader and going to being like a department head or a division leader and earning six figures and like well into the six figures and that sort of stuff is you need to 
be able to lead a team of people who can do their job without having to, without you having to go and do their job for them. Um, and so in the, in the office space now, that's essentially like what my role has become, right? And I've talked about this to my team. My, my job now is to make myself redundant in, in my department so that they can run day to day without me having to be there to watch over them. And then I can go to the owner and the CEO of the company and say, hey, I've done that, right? That, that department's fixed, it's done, it's sorted. You've got a TL, TL in there that knows what they're doing. Everyone's under control. What's the next part do you, that you want me to fix and how much are you gonna pay me to fix it, right? And that's seen like a massive increase in my salary, right? And, you know, people that I work with will watch this. I'm not gonna talk about exact figures, but it's, it's like well more money than I thought I was going to earn in this position. And the conversations that I've had going forward are, you know, I mean, I'm building this, I'm building this team for the company in Australia. We've already talked about expanding into New Zealand and spending time over there, building a team, going to the U S expanding over there, building a team, right. We're like, we're sitting down and having discussions about like, well, do we go to California? Do we go to Texas? Right? Like, what are we going to do all this? And like, these are conversations I never thought that I was going to have. And to get back to your question, this all kind of happened around the same time that JP reached out and he's like, mate, now is that time. Right, this is it. We talked a couple of months ago. Lenny's done this with a few people. You are primed and ready. Do it, right? Make it happen. And I think I still made some excuses around finances. And I was kind of like, oh, look, let me let me save up a bit of cash and, you know, make sure I've got kind of a... Yeah, and you said it would take a few months yeah. to save up the coin to pay the fee. Yeah. And, and then you're in in three weeks. And JP just, <laughs> and JP just ripped into me and... For context, what does that what does that mean? Because a lot of people would be like, "Oh, what like JP? Like what a dick!" But like, what does that what does that actually mean? So, for me, I was looking at it as okay. Well, I'm getting paid my salary from work. The money in my accounts with match betting is is kind of stuck there, right? We don't want to make withdrawals if we can avoid it. Um, we don't want to deliberately try and launder the money because you're gonna you're gonna lose out long term, right? And so. I'm sitting there kind of mapping it out and being like, well, how much can I afford to put away each week, each fortnight, right? While also kind of having my rainy day fund for the family, right? If my Mrs. Car blows up and we need to get that sorted, I need to have some cash. That's one of the excuses you used. Didn't that happen? Yeah, that that legitimately actually happened. So the first, when you guys, when you guys reached out to me the first time, like October, November, and I was like, yeah, look, I'm keen to do it. Like not long after that, um, my wife's car went in for a service and they found like a massive crack in the engine block and they're like, you need a, like a whole new engine in the car. So like four and a half grand later, that was awesome fun. Um, but anyway, so JP kind of, kind of smacking me around. So, um, <laughs> it was, I was sitting in the office. I'm like, ah, oh, look, no, 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 it's going to take me a bit of time. You know, I've kind of mapped it out. This is what I need to do. And JP goes, send me a list of all the accounts you have and how much are in, how much is in them. And so I sent him the list and I'm like, here's what I've got in everything. Here's what I've got in the bank. Here's what I've got in all my in all the different bookies. And JP just goes right. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Fuck them off. Take I it all. Remember take it all. About take it all office. out and get. Take it all out and get your ass into the office because this is what we're doing. Because yeah. you're gonna make 50, 60, 70 grand this year. Yeah. And I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so that's like so JP kept challenging you. You kept kind of playing a straight bat, yeah. avoiding it, putting it to the side. Yeah. Then something switch, uh, something changed, and you were like, "All right, I'm gonna have a crack at this in my personal life." Yeah. And then it's obviously flown over into your match betting life as well, yeah. where you're just like, "Fuck it!" Like, it's time to just like seriously level up in, yeah. in all other aspects. Like, I'm sitting here talking to you now, and it's like speaking to a different kind of person. Like <laughs> this, I'm having a bit of a mayo moment here, where it's just like, "What the fuck?" Of like, who am I talking to? So yeah. So then what happens? So you finally pull the trigger. And JP's got you over the line, has walked you into this, and then you come into the office and you sit down with Lenny, and then what happens? Uh, yeah, we kind of had my soul ripped out, basically, um, in the yeah. nicest, again, in the nicest way possible. Um, <laughs> so this is the first onboarding session. Yeah, so the, the conversation that we, we sat down, and like I remember, honestly, I only remember bits and pieces of it, because I, I think a lot of it was kind of brain breaking at the time before sorry before we dive into this i just wanted to like to paint the picture right so my understanding of what you thought mentorship and this conversation and everything with lenny was going to be was just like this brute force yeah. operation where you come in and lenny says don't be a bitch it's essentially yeah okay yeah. But, but that's what i thought it was gonna he be. sent me a message like a few days before saying he's fully stressed he's shaking which is all fine yeah. he was yeah but then he's like 
he sent me a message and I rinsed him. He's like, I just think this is just a brute force thing and like I don't really know what to expect. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Be be nervous. Yeah. But like, but that's not what up. this is. Yeah, yeah. Because this, I, is, this I, is way more meticulous. Look, for the for the most part, I consider myself a pretty smart person. I'm happy to to say, hey, look, I don't know how this works. Please help me. Yeah. Right. And I think that's what a lot of people in the community. It's it's strange, right? Because because to humble yourself like that almost sounds like you're taking a step back but it's not right it's like this huge watershed moment and you know not to not to make a big deal out of it but for me to be having this at the age of like 36 37 the guys in the community that are like 18 19 20 21 that are having these moments it's like potential is limitless right what you can achieve but that's what i thought it was right this brute force thing i was sitting there and i'm like you guys are talking about people that are, are doing you know $200 units and you know people with operations where they're doing $1,000 units and things like that and I'm like it can't be possible right how does this work and so I come in and so you've come in and then and then you sit down with Lenny and then basically yeah. you've been blindsided because what happens next you had no clue what's well, going to happen at the time were you of the belief that you kind of knew a fair bit about the match being landscape like been doing it for so long I, th- I feel like I knew kind of how to I knew I felt like I knew how to set up accounts how to defend accounts yep how to look for promos, how to, you know, keep ratios under control, like all the, all the typical things that yep. you, you would do. But did you think there was much more possible than that? I mean, I knew there had to be something because when you hear about people like Mayo and stuff like that making like squillions of dollars and I'm sitting there and I'm like, there's yeah, got to be a enough. way, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, not to go a million miles off track, but like part of this is like you talk about mindset. Like uh, over the last couple of years, I've fallen in love with the Dark Souls games. Right? I don't know if you guys have no idea what games. Is. Dark Souls. What the fuck is that? So it's a, into that. So they're, they're, it's it's a it's a series of it's a series Johnny of video man. games, right? And they're they're notorious for basically like not being impossible, but being like super duper difficult, right? Like you, you run into right. a boss, you get killed, you get killed in one move, and then the screen just goes black and it says you died on the screen, and it's then you get, and then you go all the way back to the start. Don't introduce this shit to me because I'll really right. get addicted to that. So, <laughs> so I started, I started playing them because I, I, I picked one up cheap, and I'd, I'd seen some of the lore and stuff, and like I was just getting absolutely like nuked by the very first boss in the very first game, and I'm like, this is this game's bullshit. Like, yeah. no wonder people hate this stuff. I'm gonna take it back, and then I was like, well, it cost me twenty bucks. I've got a week to return it. I'll give it the weekend and I'll see what I can do. There's got to be a way to do this, right? Like people have beaten this game. So there has to be a way to do it. And anyway, and so I've ended up like finishing the series. Like they made Elden Ring. So I've done that. I've jumped into all their games and I I love them, right? And so it was the same thing with match betting. I'm I'm sitting back and I'm looking at people like Mayo and I'm like, so there's got to be a way to do this, right? He's not lying. Yeah. You guys aren't having him on the podcast to say, hey, I made 50K, sign up, right? Like, it as would much actually as- cost more to, like <laughs> when they say paid actors, it would cost more and way more time to educate someone as a paid actor to actually be able to speak for an hour. <laughs> That's it. But yeah. Um, so I come in and I sit down with Lenny. And again, I honestly, I only remember bits and pieces of it because I, I don't think my brain was ready for the conversation. But what I remember of it is like the initial probably half of the conversation we weren't even talking about like money we weren't talking about match betting like lenny was like how often do you go to the gym oh, what's work how's work going at the moment you know oh, tell us about your kids like, all that sort of stuff and like happy to answer the questions that's fine and go through it and i'm like what's Get on with what's, it, mate. what's going on like <laughs> what, are, what are we doing here i'm like all right yeah cool like this is this is whatever and then he starts throwing some numbers at me and he's like well, here's what you can do. Here's what you can get to. And I, th- I think, I think you mapped something out, and the number came back, and it was like we were talking about like eighty grand or something in the next twelve months. It was something it was like one hundred and twenty to one hundred and fifty k. Yeah, it was crazy. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. I actually started crying. Cause Nothing my, to be ashamed about. Because my brain couldn't handle that. That's possible, right? It's like for most of my life, I've been like a pretty average bloke and a pretty average wage and I budget properly and I save money and, you know, COVID was pretty good to me and I got to bust my ass and make plenty of money in overtime and, you know, set my family up fairly well. But I've never been like a super greedy person. I've never been the sort of person that's like, no, pay me more money, right? If I'm happy doing something, I'll do it. You know, as long as I think it's fair, we're all good. And so when he sits down, he's like, you know, 
yeah, you can make the conversation in specific was me going like, I can, I can help you take this as far as you want. Like if I was doing yeah. this myself, I'd be comfortable making 50 to hundred K a month. And then you just looked at me like, I, we've got the clip of it. And you just looked at me like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can comprehend that you can make that much money in a month. He's like, that, you're like, that's my salary in, in a month. Yeah. Or like in between that or whatever. It was like, yeah, like I, I, I literally broke my brain and, um, I came out like just thinking about it now, like it's still like, I, I can't believe it. But one thing that I remember coming out of the conversation was talking to, to JP on the way out of the office. Um, and he was basically like, you know, I'm still walking away kind of scared about what this is going to be. I'm like, wow, like I, I've just been kind of broken down to like base level in terms of mindset, right? In terms of how this is going to look going forward. And something that JP said that really stuck with me was, and I won't use the exact figures, but he was basically like, we've shown you how you can take a dollar and turn it into a hundred dollars. So why can't you take $10 and turn it into a thousand? And if you could take $10 and turn it into a thousand, why can't you take a thousand dollars and turn it into a million? Just do the, the exact same thing, but on a higher level and better. And in the car, the whole way home, I thought about that, that conversation. And basically from that point forward with everything I've done has just been like, well, yeah, I've, I've built, I've built this base of basically 20 grand. Right. And when I started, I had, when I first signed up with you guys, I had two. And it's like, well, if I've turned two into 20, like why can't I turn 20 into 200? Correct. Well, why can't you? Yeah. Why not? Well, I fucking can. Yeah, that's what, we, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, like, good. That's the point. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I like that. So, yeah, I actually have a little bit of goosebumps listening to that. Like, it's just sick to see the growth that you've made. But yeah. specifically over the last, so since the last podcast, you sat down with Lenny. You got your ear chewed off by JP. He kept pushing you, pushing you, pushing you. He cracked you. Yeah. You went into the conversation with Lenny. You walked out, and you were just like. I know nothing, pretty much. Because you wouldn't have learned yeah. anything in that, would you? No, there was yeah. nothing about like... First session's always just... No, there was nothing about like, here's here's how we do it. Like, here are the here's the EV that you're going to look for. Here are the kind of bets yeah, yeah. that we want to hunt down. Here's the way to set up an account in a different way or anything. There was literally none of that. It was, tell me about work. Tell me about your family. How often are you going to the gym? Like, what's your mindset like at the moment? What sort of capital have you got in your accounts? You know, and... and and that was it. And I think, I mean, Lenny, you probably speak more to the purpose behind all that. And I don't know how much you want to give away, but my takeaway from that is that's Lenny trying to understand how I tick so that he can then go away and he knows, right, when I when I call Pete for this first discussion about here is, you know, and again, I won't give away too much of it. Here is, you know, uh, a way that we look for some EV in particular promos, right? <clears throat> He knows how to approach that with me now and he knows a better way to speak to me about it, A, so that I'll actually go and do it, but B, so that I understand it and I'll respond properly rather than just saying like, shut the fuck up, sit the fuck down, yeah, pick, yeah. pick up your phone and go do this. And I'm like, okay, like without the way, actually understanding the it. The way he like, teaches you something is going to be different to the way he teaches fudge, even though mm. it would be the exact same thing, for yeah. example. And you can't, this is with anything, you cannot one size fits all approach. This yeah, is a exactly mentorship it. program. This isn't a go watch seven videos and that's your your course yeah this is like one-on-one -on -one, tailored to you tailored to your goals tailored to your lifestyle tailored to your fucking kids like if you whatever else that's in there yeah tailored to how you operate there are people who walk in and just go to town first week there are people who take things slower he needs to be able to do that and he's very good at picking up on the traits very well in terms of who he's working with like he'll he'll sit down after a meeting and he'll always summarize who he's just sat down with yeah He's like, this guy's going to be like top three or this guy's going to struggle or he just knows straight away. And we kind of do that now too from speaking to people like DM, this guy's a weapon, this guy's no hope sort of thing. We know because yeah. we just can pick up on the traits. And that is so critical to be able to then give the right information. So like you said, do this rather than, <laughs> hey, Pete, you pick up this last time. We're going to teach it this way because I know you worked out that last time so yeah that's really exactly. critical sorry to interrupt just to let you know all of our podcasts are actually on spotify and any of the other podcast platforms so if you want to go listen to it check the description and you'll find the links that initial meeting as well having we, we've recently done a few podcasts with people after their initial meeting yeah and the the feeling that you had maybe not like the 
breaking you down totally, but that first session with Lenny is basically instilling the belief in you that wherever you want to take this, I'll take you there. Yeah. Like that's what that meeting is. And like, even you sit with Fudge in his podcast and he goes, man, like I just cannot believe it's taken me this long. And like, I didn't even know that like I could do this. And after sitting with Lenny, I now see it. J2G, the exact same thing. So like, it's nice to get that feedback over and over again that like that first meeting is like to sit there because right now your beliefs are here. This is what you think you can do. You don't even know. You sit with Lenny and now it's like, okay, I actually think I can get to here. Yeah. And you show me the path to get to here. So that is like so massive for so many people. It's even like from free call to join Platinum is like they need to see, Yeah. you know, they need to the break down that barrier yeah. or that belief that they have. And that's what that first meeting is. And to see more and more guys go through that meeting with Lenny and then just go, man, I can do this. And I didn't even know that I could do this. Yeah. It's just so sick to see. And I'm glad that, that you've had that. What do you feel, Lenny, like in those, I guess in that initial meeting with Pete, what was, so we've got Pete's perspective of it, like post meeting. What was your perspective of that? Yeah, well, Pete, Pete was quite a bit different to everyone else in that like we identified that you were going to be a lot slower to progress up. Mm-hmm. We made that pretty clear with how we're going forward. So we had to kind of adjust things in a way. Um, and I was kind of concerned of like how would you, like how would you react to that? Like me telling you we're actually going to go a lot slower here because you don't yeah. have the means to take it further. And like we had, I reckon we spoke probably 45 minutes about that kind of topic just like broadened on it but um why why didn't he have the means bankroll yeah it was bankroll time a few other things um but i think you took it in a way it's like fuck i want to get there i want to do that yeah and want to push it further rather than like using it as a limiting which is what i was scared of it was going to kind of limit you and then you've yeah literally blown me out of the water with what i was expecting to be honest thanks man <laughs> nah. starting I mean, we yeah, talk and, and that's another thing too. Like we, <laughs> you'd know this, but we've barely even started. Like, yeah, the time I've spent with you to some other guys is like a quarter, half. Yeah, I, I get that, and, and I know we've had conversations about like where am I at, kind of positionally and all that. Yeah. Like, not quite ready for the next step, ready next step. So, how do we maximize what I've got? But um, I mean, you talk about going slower, that sort of thing. Like one of these one of these mindset things that I've always talked about, like even from way back when, Tommy was. I've always looked at, at things right or wrong. I've always looked at things and said like, hey, 80% of something's better than 100% of nothing, right? And like I, I talk about like the agents that work for me, my teams, I'm like, look, if you're feeling crook and you know, you're not sure if you can get in for the day, that sort of thing. I'm like, how many times do you do that? And it gets like 10 o'clock in the morning and you think, I probably could have gone to work today. Like I'm feeling not too bad. I'm like, so come to work, right? Get started. And if clearly you're not fit for work, I'll send you home. That's fine but I'd rather you at least turn up and put in the effort. Um, and like we were talking about outside just before, and I don't know if it shows up on camera, but like I, I reconnected with my weightlifting coach and, you know, I used to make the excuse of like, oh, well, I'd have to get up at 4.30 every morning to be able to get to my new job on time and then, and, 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 and that kind of thing. But it's like, okay, but if I can put in the effort and commit to it and start, and if I'm seeing results, well, then I know that I'm going to keep going, right? And so like I jumped into it and within like two weeks already, I'm like, oh, sh- shoulders are looking pretty good. But yeah, you know, let's go. Like, you know, this, this isn't too bad. Like, you know, get home from a get home from a session and I'm absolutely knackered and, you know, jumping in the shower and Mrs. makes a nice comment and things like that. And so it's like, all right, cool. Now I want to go tomorrow. And so when Lenny's talking about, well, we're going slower, we're going slower, we're going slower. We're still making way more money than I thought I was going to make. And I, and I know we don't really want to focus on profits, but... Again, the people that follow me on Instagram know I haven't really been doing kind of profit updates because I'm, I'm sort of beyond, like the system works, right? Like you make money off it, guys. It, that's that's self-evident. But like I put one up a, a, a couple of weeks ago where I had one weekend, like from, from Friday night with the sports system right through until Sunday night when the last sports system tips were done, horses, all that sort of stuff, where I made three grand in, in the weekend, right? And like when I first started and sat down with you two boys and you're like, oh, how much money do you want to make? And I was like, oh, well, like if I put in two and I get back six, like, yeah, triple your investment, like, oh, I'd, I'd be, I'd be really happy. It's like, mate, I've just made half of that in three days. Yeah. Right. Um, since starting this, I've had two other weeks where I've made a thousand, over a thousand bucks. Like even just this last week, go on Sunday to Sunday, I made nearly 1400. Um, one of those weeks I had, I made a thousand bucks and I didn't even follow the horses that day. It was my daughter's birthday that weekend. 
So I was out with family the whole day and you boys went and had a, like a 24 unit bomb <laughs> that I didn't, that I didn't follow. But and you didn't I, care. But I didn't care. I remember the I, message you wrote in the Discord. I, I still made a thousand bucks that week. Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? Like, if I had a follow, it would have been, you know, more than double that. But who cares? It's like, mm. I used to, I used to like high five myself when I had a thousand dollar month, right? Like my first three months, I was at you got a thousand dollar race before, haven't you? Yeah. So I, I messaged Lenny one time. So one of the one of the things that's um, <laughs> Lenny loves it. One of the things that <laughs> Lenny Lenny showed us. Um, again, I'm not going to go into the details, but. Yes, I, I remember messaging Lenny after um, having a day of turning over some bonuses and a few sort of non-promo bets and that sort of thing around it. And with, I mess- with the structure and stuff that you've been oh, taught, yeah, yeah, yeah hundred yeah. percent right with the with the, yeah. the mentorship structure and all this, right? Like, there's there's a there's a, a shitload that goes yeah. into it. I just didn't want people to think you just were punting. No, 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 no. There's there's a there's a shitload that goes into it. But I remember messaging Lenny, and I was like, is, I was like, is there some sort of achievement unlock for having your first thousand dollar profit race? Because because <laughs> here's here's what I've done, and I gave him the breakdown of everything that I'd put on, and I'm like, I've just I've just cleared like a thousand and eighty dollars profit. Like, what the actual fuck? Yeah, <laughs> like I couldn't I couldn't believe it. And, um, you know, and I, I went back through and did the math yesterday, sort of in preparation for this. I had a look. Um, just following what Lenny's taught me, based on everything that I've done in, so that's since February, I think, like early Feb is when I, when I first started. Um, I'm about 4K better off than I would have been if I had have just stayed doing what I was doing. Right. What does that What does that mean? That like wh- where are you, Where are you finding that figure from? So what I'm basing that on is uh, obviously the mentorship program has all different ways about bonus turnover, different ways about doing non promo bets to mm-hmm. keep your account sustainable while mm-hmm. also like having a much higher EV on these things. Yep. So your percentage lost in keeping your account sustainable is a lot lower. Mm-hmm. So I'm any any time on the system or the sports system we're not winning these bets again if you're not in platinum it's all set to a 65 percent mm-hmm. um using the method that lenny taught me and, and I'll, I'll get into a, a slightly different breakdown in a second but using the method that lenny taught me on my bonuses i'm running at about 105 percent nice in the last two and a bit months mm-hmm. two months mm-hmm. um that's when i actually followed it and did it properly mm-hmm. i haven't always followed it and done it properly because there are times when i've been keen and i've maybe kind of jumped at shadows or I've been a little bit too, I've been half, half smart and not done it the right way. I think that's been a theme in almost every podcast we've done. It was something so, else that I wrote yeah. down, got ahead of yourself in almost every podcast or tried something different <clears throat> that maybe wasn't yeah exactly explained. And then you got blown up and you go, fuck, I'm an idiot. I realized it and I'm not going to do that again. Yeah, that's, that's exactly <laughs> it. And so, so I worked out, so fo- following Lenny at the moment, I'm about 4k off, 4k better off than I would have been over the last two months. Um, it should be six. Like if I was strict and really doing it properly, if I applied that same kind of percentage and turnover to everything that I'd done, I'd be another 2k in front. What unit size is this on? Just for clarification. Uh, so at the moment I'm running a 75, yeah. 70, 75 thereabouts. Yeah. So, yeah. so these are just got, like, so these are just way. like the tweaks and the changes in terms of like efficiencies of bonuses, non promos, yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty much put should have put six K in your pocket, but has put four K in your pocket. Yeah. That's just exactly from having those. Yeah. Yeah. And so to to put it in, in percentage In two months. In two months. Yeah. Nice. And it, like to put it in percentage terms, again, we talk about sixty five percent bonus turnover for, yeah, yeah. for kind of the regular system followers. Platinum you're looking at about eighty. Even with the stuff ups that I've made and like the times that I've kind of jumped ahead and, and done the the wrong thing and not really taking the EV that Lenny's shown me to actually take. I'm still running at about 88% and that includes my non-promo stuff yeah. as well. Sick. Which is like insane. Yeah. Right. Like I didn't think you could do this. Yeah. Right. Like that essentially means that every time we put a bet on, if, if you put up, if we put a hundred dollars worth of bets on, I'm getting almost $90 back, including the non-promo bets that I'm putting on around that promo, which is ridiculous. Yeah. That's unreal. Like, and obviously it doesn't include the ones that are winning. We're just talking. Correct. About, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just talking about what, what comes Losses back. And, and that, bonuses, yeah. that's so why you've gone from like, like losing on your non-promos to breaking even or profiting. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to talk about too many methods, obviously, yeah. but there's a lot of the, there's a lot of the, the sports stuff that you do has been really good. 
Um, I know I've taken more advantage of a few of the promos. I know I've, I've put up in the sports chat, like like the Neds and Blue yeah, Bet yeah. early payout thing is like my absolute favorite at the moment. Yep. And like, you know, when they, when those come off, it's like, holy shit. Yep. But what I probably would have looked at previously before dealing with Lenny is there, there would have been games where I've probably taken a stab at those promos before mm-hmm. without doing any research without understanding the lay which of the games land. are better than others and yeah, yeah without without knowing like anything like that right yep. whereas now it's like yes it's outside of the system tips it's part of the mentorship program it's like hey there's other opportunities to look at yep. go and do some research and have a look into it and yep. it's like oh i can take advantage of this you don't hit on all of them but much like you know the the system with the ev it's like when you do hit it's like that covers everything that you've lost and then some and so now you're in front and 100%. It's, again it, it's it's ways that i knew were there we all see them when you sign up for these bookmakers you know you get the texts all the time you get emails you get alerts but hesitant to do it because it's like well no i'll just tell i'll just do what the boys tell me right i'll follow the tips i'll do what's i'll do what's there rather mm-hmm. than kind of pushing it and taking advantage of what's happening and what Lenny shows you is it's like, no mate, go and have a look at this, do a bit of research and you can make some money. On you doing the extra stuff, do you think you've got the ability now to kind of think outside the box, think outside the boundaries of what you previously, like obviously when you start with the system, you're kind of straight line into doing what you're told. Yeah. How has that kind of changed? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm like gung ho and super adventurous with it. You know, I'm not like firing off promos and hunting you know crazy multis left right and center or anything like that to try and try and make money for me it's more about even and, with and mindset and generally i mean for me it's 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 becoming hyper efficient at what we were already doing yeah. right it's like most people out there and, and you see people in the chat you know there there are some of the newer guys or maybe the less experienced guys you know, throwing in the chat and people are like, hey, has anyone found any good two ways? Is, are there any middles going tonight, right? Like, and it's like, well, that's great. Understand it, learn it, you know, pick up those skills. But in- You soon realize it's almost like a waste of time. Well, it's it's, it's more one of those things. It's, it's not necessarily a waste of time, but it's one of those things where it's like, okay, let's say like hunting for middles, right? And And- you guys can talk about how that works and and what a middle is and all that sort of stuff better than I can. But for me previously, when people would be like, oh, there's a great middle opportunity on this game, right? Okay, well, cool. How much do I put on it? How many bookies do I hit that with, right? It's like, I can find a middle across 20 bookies. Am I putting a unit on all 20 bookies here? Yeah. And then it's like, then if it doesn't hit, like what have I lost? And how much of my profit has that eaten into? And well, tomorrow there's another middle opportunity across 15 bookies. So am I hitting 15 bookies? And do I have to change the stakes now that I'm putting on to match what I did last night? Or am I doing the same unit size? And then if it doesn't hit, well, how much am I losing? I never thought about that sort of stuff before the mentorship program. And so when people would jump in the chat and you know they're being helpful and so i'd be like oh oh my god there's a four point middle on st kilda versus collingwood tonight with these eight bookies and i'd be like oh well is it across any more bookies than that boom 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 boom. oh yeah cool all right unit 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 uh didn't hit oh well maybe we'll hit the next one but i don't look at it and then go it's 50 bucks mate i've just lost like three units on that one bet yeah you don't think you just it's like oh my god middle i never even thought about it yeah yeah literally never thought about it but now I do, and now I look at it, and so it's just clawing back. Like you, you talk about mindset, not just focusing on can I go up in unit size and increase my profits. It's the risk management and bringing back a much bigger percentage of what you're, you know, quote unquote, losing. The fees. The fees, the taxes, right? Yeah, yeah. Most, most of most of that four K, well, all of that four K essentially because it's just bonus turnover and non promos that all of that essentially all of that 4k is just reducing the fees that I'm paying the, and getting the, more yeah. back the on word the word you used the word you used was hyper efficiency and like JP would speak to probably 85 90% of the guys that join the mentorship um like before they join and having listened to like heaps of the conversations hearing him speak in the office so many people either undervalue or just don't truly understand that hyper efficiency for guys that are already really, really good at match betting yeah. is like the key to going to like astronomical levels. Yeah. 
And because they're, they're already making a lot of money, it's like, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, I can't get to another level where it's going to take me too much time or, you know, I've, I've already got heaps of accounts or whatever. It's the efficiency. They don't know that exists. Correct. If in yeah. Platinum Squad, the most um, complained about or what's the word, like annoying thing is non-promo turnover. Everyone has had their battles with it, whether it be trying to get money out of retails into Betfair. We've obviously stopped talking about that now yeah. and, and, and encouraging that. Every single person is limited by the time and effort and energy that is spent on non-promos and it eats them. Yeah. And everyone who, who like doesn't join the mentorship doesn't understand or like they inquire about it, but then they have like this limiting belief. They think it is like the brute force. Yeah. You're just going to get the unit size higher. They don't understand that if they drop their non-promo turnover from negative 9% to negative 2 or positive, that's actually going to make them potentially like 30k in a year yeah on on and the higher your volume of turnover is the more that efficiency impacts your profit yeah same with the bonus turnover if you're turning over 100k bonuses in a year your bonus turnover goes from 80 to 100 you made 20k yeah and then multiply that if you increase your volume and then people don't get that that third figure is what that third factor of efficiency is what the mentorship program is and every single person comes out of it everyone says this is a game changer this has fully changed the way I do it. And I want to ask you a question because assuming all of this is happening, you're making more money. Yep. Every single person assumes more time, more energy. No. What, what do you <laughs> say to that? If uh, it's actually, people probably won't believe this. It's actually taken less time because a, a lot of what Lenny teaches around, especially around non-promo stuff is tying it into like the bonus turnover and tying it into some of the tips and things like that. And so when I'm, uh, again, I keep saying it, I'm not going to give away your secrets. When I'm looking to turn over a bonus, at the same time, there's also an opportunity to get a non-promo better way a lot of the time on that as well. So it means I don't have to, I don't have to think twice. Of course. Right? It's, it's patience, it's waiting, it's recognizing the opportunity for the bonus turnover. It's double checking the odds. It's looking, like, does this line up? Is this what Lenny's taught me to do? Yes, it does. If I'm confident enough then to execute a bonus on it, then there's another way that I can tie a non-promo bet into it around that as well, yep. right? And so that means that instead of then getting that bonus away and then going and having to look for a non-promo opportunity, it's like bang, bang, right? You're two birds with one stone. It almost, yeah. like it legitimately almost cuts your time in half. But not just that method, <laughs> there's all the other methods too. Like you're saving so much time by doing them as opposed to... The thing is though... And you spot on Lenny, like there's, there's obviously a lot of ways in which that the mentor guys can do this, but like, I'm just trying to reflect on the last conversation we had versus the guy that's sitting next to me right now. And as I said, I mentioned like you were talking about burnout, you were yeah. flat. I could honestly like see the toll that it was taking on you. And like, yeah, I was even though the money was great, like you were literally fried and cooked. Now this happens to so many people that even potentially made double what you made. Some guys make 30, 40, 50, yeah, but they message- give up. JP, they're like, man, I'm done. I haven't done it in a while. It's fucked. Like, Spend, it takes so much yeah. time. Like, 20 hours a week. I'm like, bro, you can make three times what you're making with 12 hours a week. And I yeah. said, no, no, that's not possible. Like, yeah. No, it, this is what's happening. Yeah. Like, brother, we see it. And it's like, you, you were burning out from what? Non-promo, I would say. from from the, And losing and You probably counts. don't even know that. I mean, yeah. It pr- just eats at you if you're constantly worrying about that. And you yeah. sent me a message about a month ago. You said, um, the biggest winners... You sent me a massive spiel, but you said um, your non-promo turnover has gone like massively up. But then you said the biggest winners through that time, uh, the biggest winners though are time and bankroll. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're backing us up. Like you're saying it's half the time. Yeah. And the bankroll is being freed up because of the stuff. We won't get into it, but like, yeah, now that's yeah. allowing you to do more. But he's just re-energized. Like, yeah. I'm not talking about just match betting. Like, you're telling us off air, and I do want to talk about it. Like, you're like, I'm hammering the gym. Yeah. I'm fucking dominating at work. Yeah. All of these things. H- hyper-efficiency. Yeah. And you've got this thing on the side that's making you money, that's making you more confident. Like, you're so... It's just like, it's ridiculous seeing you. And I, I do want to talk about, just for, for one, I said we won't talk about it much, the profit. But just yeah. this, if you watch all of these podcasts and you're sitting here watching this one now, it's just the epitome of compounding the compounding effect of like consistency effort yeah and now you're reaping literally reaping the rewards of because we didn't do it like lenny didn't do it jp didn't do it like 
we've shown you the way, held your hand, but you've done all this work and now yeah. you're literally reaping the rewards. Like it, it must be satisfying. It is, man. I mean, the, I, I went back and watched the, um, the three month pod in the lead up to this. Cause I, I felt like a, I felt coming into to this one today, I was like, look, a lot of it is probably going to be like a, you know, like a recap on where I've been and where I've done and like, where are we at now? And it's kind of like, well, no, 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 we can, you can go look at the other pods. Yeah. It's where are you going? But I'm like, I, I go back and I look at myself in that podcast and I'm like, I want to reach through the screen and just smack this bloke. <laughs> And she'd be like, dude, you ain't wearing you shoes. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, no shoes on, mate. Socks on. I was, I spent too much, I spent too much time worrying about JP's bloody avo toast. Yeah, and, toast, and then, eating toast. Fuck. But we're a shambles then, too. But like, Still we t- we talk about mindset, and in like, you know, I'm just kind of going through a couple of things that we wanted to tick off. Like, one of the one of the things that um that really kind of hit me. I don't know if you guys have ever watched a movie called The Gambler, with Mark Wahlberg and John Goodman. So, long story short, Mark Wahlberg's like a, a chronic gambler, loses big, right? It's like the, you know, the redemption story, right? I'm going to borrow money from the wrong people and now I'm going to dig myself out of the hole kind of thing. And he sits down, he has a conversation with John Goodman, who's this like hardcore, like will kill your whole family kind of loan shark. And he talks about having fuck you money, right? And he's like, you know. You make two million bucks, you buy yourself a house, you get a nice Japanese car that's going to run forever, right? That gives you a position of fuck you, right? You don't like your boss, fuck you, right? Someone wants you to do something, fuck you, right? And, you know, I'm a, I'm a wrestling fan as well. And my missus and I have talked about a guy called CM Punk, who was like one of the biggest wrestling stars in the world 10 years ago, was one of the longest reigning champions, was getting paid squillions of dollars. And then he just walked away. He was like, I don't like the direction this is going. Like, fuck you, I'm going to walk away. And he didn't come back for like seven or eight years because he had fuck you money, right? He had the kind of money where people would be like, oh, come and do this for me. And he's like, yeah, fuck you, right? And so a lot of what's kind of happened to me in the last couple of months is like this ambition of like, look, I don't ever expect to be a millionaire, but it's this ambition of like, I want fuck you money. Like being able to go to somebody and say, no, I'm not doing that. That doesn't work for me, man. Sorry. Like, I don't need this. Fuck you. Like I've got, I've got something else that I can fall back on, you know. Well, what's an example of that? Well, I mean, so like at, at the job that I've just been at recently, we, we had a strategy day a few months ago and I'd only been in the business for a couple of months. And so like, I was kind of like, I'm the new guy. I'm, you know, I've just taken over the department. I'll keep my head down. I'll, you know, kind of get to know everybody, that sort of thing. And I was really, really frustrated about a lot of the things that weren't happening in the business in terms of standards, in terms of like, it's a, it's a small business that's starting up, right? So a lot of our like procedures, a lot of our policies, nothing's written down for the most part, right? We're still growing, we're still learning that. And so there's a lot of like standards that kind of slip off. And the owner's an awesome guy, right? Um, MC, shout out if you're watching this. Awesome guy, get along with him, great. My big criticism of him internally was that he very much wants to be everybody's mate and was was not acting like a boss the way I thought that a boss should work. And the best boss that I've ever had was a guy that he was like old school. He was like, I don't care if both your legs are broken, get an Uber to work, right? Like <laughs> you sit at a desk, you don't need your legs, right? Like he would bust your balls over everything, but he really pushed me and really drove me. And that's what I want. And so we had this strategy day and the opening 10 minutes of this strategy day, we're sitting with this you know business you know, analyst expert who's like, I want everyone to take 10 minutes, you know, write down what you think the awesome things about the business are, the problems in the business, and then we're going to go around and speak about it and we'll kind of prioritize it. And so everybody takes their 10 and he goes, all right, who wants to go first? And everyone just kind of sat there and I'm like, all right, I'll go first. And so I stood up and I went, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, basically, right? In the nicest, most professional way possible. And the last thing that I left on was I, I looked the owner straight in the eyes and I was like, mate, I love you. you. You're basically like our work dad, but you are too fucking soft and we are all worse professionally because of it. And then I sat back down and I went, I'm either going to get sacked <laughs> <laughs> or we're going to spend, or we're going to spend the next eight hours actually fixing this problem. And so he comes and grabs me. We, we, we started talking about other things and got on with it. And he comes and he grabs me a couple of hours later. And mind you, this, this is the kind of guy that like, while well, the business analyst is like doing some, doing some discussions, right? he gets up and walks over to the couch and starts doing push-ups. And he's like, yeah, I'm listening. Right? And it's like, because he, he just 
he's in a position of fuck you, right? So he grabs me a couple of hours later and he's like, no one talks to me like that, but I'm glad you did. And I did that from what I felt was a position of fuck you. So I can go and get another job. I've got money right, coming in now, right? I've started this mentorship program. I'm leveling up. I've got cash coming in. I don't need to be here. If it's not enjoyable for me and you're not serious about taking this business where you want it to go, then maybe it's not the right fit. And like I mentioned before, that discussion has now gone into like, all right, cool. Spend six months getting that department sorted because I want to be in New Zealand. I want to be in the United States. I want to have like a, you know, a back end team running out of the Philippines. And if you can do what you say you can do for the team you've got currently, then I'm going to pay you a shitload of money to look over all of that. Yeah. And that's an opportunity that nine months ago when I sat down for this 12 months podcast, a, I probably never would have backed myself in to do it, even though I know I've got the skills and for the most part, the, the temperament when I get to know somebody to do it, but I never would have backed myself to, to challenge the owner of a company like that. Um, and I also, if you had have told me, hey, the opportunity is there to do that, would you like to give it a go? I probably would have turned it down because I would have stayed in my safe little bubble i'm like no i've got a good job and it's close to home and i get paid well and i like the people so yeah. i'm fine i'll just stay where i am but now it's like well you know one of the things that <laughs> that i mentioned in the conversation with lenny is i was like mate in in 15 years time i'll be 50 and you won't even be as old as i am now i'm like so not to not to have like a midlife crisis in front of you but like my opportunity to cash in and make the most out of my professional career out of match betting and all of that is a lot smaller than a lot of the people that will watch this podcast. There are guys that are going to watch this that are in their early 20s, mid 20s. You guys have got a decade before you get to where I'm at. And it took me a decade to get here. So if you can take something out of this conversation and the other podcasts and everything that you know these guys here are teaching, you are way in front of where I'm at in terms of professionalism, in terms of mindset, in terms of attitude. And you are a million times in front of all your mates and the guys down the pub and the people that you work with who aren't even where you are now. And, you know, not to kind of doomsay or anything like that, but, you know, like we talk about, you know, everyone needs a side income to deal with the economy and the way things are going and all this sort of stuff. It's like the reality of the situation is there's going to be plenty of people to get left behind. There's plenty of people who don't want to put in the grind, who don't want to do the hustle, who aren't going to make the most of their time in these opportunities. That's well and truly already happening. Yeah, 100%. And, and 12 months ago, I would have been one of those people. I would have been comfortable with, I get paid well, my bills are paid, I'm still saving money, I'm putting everything away, cool, that's fine. Since then, it's been like, no, I want fuck you money. There's nothing wrong with that as well, like being comfortable, but but the way that you speak about it, and I think always having known you, there's there's always that little bit of, this guy definitely, maybe he's comfortable, but he, he wants more. And I reckon he knows that he can be more or like get more out of what he's doing. And there are heaps of guys in our community where you just speak to them and it's like, man, like you're doing well, but like I can just see yeah. that you just need to rock it up your ass because you could be, like you could go to another stratosphere. And I, I speak to like, obviously take a lot of free calls, but I speak to some of these, like there was a guy that joined Platinum yesterday and he's like freshly 18 and he's like, he's like, basically what drew me is like, I'm on the work site, I'm an apprentice, second year apprentice, and all of the guys on my work site, they drink beers every weekend, they punt, they're hungover, depressed on Monday. And he's like, I just don't want to be that. Yeah. And he's like, I saw this, I've got a couple of grand and I just want to have a crack at it. And I'm like, man, you've probably just changed the trajectory of your life. Yeah. And there are so many people in our community right now that have done so well already. Like you said, they're probably already ahead of their mates, yeah. ahead of the average Joe, definitely ahead of the... 30 or 40 or 50 year old match better who starts at the same point as them. But it's like, you can literally, regardless of how old you are, where you're at, if you sit down and have a crack at something for an extended period of time, you can change the trajectory of your life. Yeah. And what you've done over the last four months, when you first started this, you didn't know it was possible, but the only reason you have access to it and you can do it now is because you kept showing up and kept doing what you knew was working for an extended period of time. And now you have access to these things and have a mindset and a different goal that, 12, 18 months ago, you wouldn't have even like, as you said, you wanted to reach in the screen and slap that guy. Be like, yeah. dude, if you do this properly, like we are going to be a different person in 18 months. And like that message is so powerful for so many people in our community, especially who know you, who have watched your whole journey because they're going to sit there and go, well, why not me? 
Yeah. And we've had guys join the Platinum Squad because they're like, I watched Pete's video. Oh, and, heaps. And yeah. like literally I've watched it and I'm like, well, fuck, I'm three years younger than him and I've only got one kid and I don't have, you know, I don't have multiple kids and I, yeah. I only work 20 <laughs> hours and not 40 hours. So why the fuck can't I do it? And yeah, it's exactly. nice to see you sit here and have achieved all the things you're going to achieve. And you're not satisfied. You're hungry. Like no, no, hungrier no, no. than ever. More to come. And like we sit here with you this time next year and you're the fucking CEO of a company or who knows what the <laughs> hell you'll be. But it'll That's just it. be like, this is just proof that regardless of where you are, who you are, if you just do something consistently for a long enough period of time and have a genuine crack at it, you change your life. Yeah. It's just putting yourself in that position. Like you put yourself in the mentorship, you put yourself in that new job, you put yourself in that conversation with your boss. Even the Saints TV thing the other day, you, you had a crack at that. Like yeah. You, you're putting yourself That's in these positions. To are still, you, are still you in that or still, what? Still ongoing, by the way. You'll get um, that. Yeah, so... Uh, it's just butterfly effect, man. I don't want to. I don't want to put any public pressure on him, but he is running through a few different guests this year to essentially work out what he wants to do next year. So I got my opportunity in a couple of months. We'll see yeah, how we go. I look forward to that. Sorry to interrupt, guys. It's Steve here. If you're sick of the ads on YouTube, jump over to Spotify or Apple Music, and you can listen to the podcast there. So the butterfly effect of you deciding to do something, forget about the mentorship. Even just like DMing Tom back in 2022. <laughs> that has now caused a number of different events to happen. <laughs> Facebook message. Um, and we're not claiming any sort of, the, you, you did it, right? Yeah. And there are so many people that they, they get to that roadblock and then they're just like, fuck. Yeah. Like someone the other day texted Steve. He's like, no, nah, I'm not paying $1,000 for platinum. Like, don't think it's valuable. And we're just like, brother, you are literally destroying your potential I mean, it's by all, doing that. It's all hurdles, right? I mean, like, so like the first hurdle is actually reaching out and doing it and I, I, like yeah, i know i do it like, like, like i told you like i help you sorry not near the mic i said no, no. i help you but you got to watch like you have to watch this you got to do yeah. this and if you can't do this man then like i can't well, he, help he you. said this guy will be a full-on he'll make 100k it's fine it's fine the message me. i'm like this guy will be i remember speaking to him like the if you do this properly you'll fucking he goes, i've got this, this guy i used to work with him his name's x obviously it's not pete, pete. <laughs> but <laughs> and he's like he will be a fucking weapon for us he knows absolutely jack nothing but he'll be a, he'll be awesome I, I, like, had, okay. I had a laugh because in preparation for this, I went right back to the start and I messaged JP and I'm like, hey, this is when I first sent the message to Tommy, right? It was June. This is when I first sent the message to Tommy. You know, it's almost two years now. And the, the initial conversation that I had with Tommy is I was like, oh, hey, Tommy, I just saw your face pop, pop up on YouTube shorts with this system thing. Seems pretty cool. Wondering how it works. Have you thought about making it a business? Because I got a couple of grand. If you want to, I got a couple of grand, and I'm looking, I'm looking to do something with it. Did you want to maybe talk about how we can kick this into a business? <laughs> <laughs> having having no idea what how big this actually two was. That, that you already had like 400 <laughs> platinum members. That you're already yeah two years in. You've made hundreds and hundreds of units. Like you were you were set. But that was that was my ignorance, right? That was me not understanding what it was or how it worked. And then, you know, we had some long conversations about like what the goal is and. You know, yes, it's about making money. Yes, it's about, you know, putting cash in people's pockets. Yes, it's about fucking the bookies and, and all that sort of stuff that we talk about. But, it, like, it's evolved. And I don't know, I, I'd be interested to hear thoughts from all three of you. Like, I know, Lenny, you've sort of come on a little bit later. Like, the evolution of this in the two years that I've been here is not the trajectory that I thought it was going to go down. And, like, the conversation I remember talking to JP as I was like, we're almost at the point as a community where the tips don't matter for the people that have been here long enough. And I compared it to like joining a, like a high end golf club. Right. And, you know, like stereotypically back in the day, like people would, you know, go and do their business deals on the golf course. Right. It's like, I'm the CEO of Woolies. I'm going to go play around with the CEOs of Coles and, you know, work out how we fuck everybody together. And, the, but the score in the game doesn't matter. The tips don't matter. Right. It's, it's, what can I learn from you? What can you learn from me? And how do we make each other better? And like, that's already happening. And you see guys like, you know, I talked about him last time, like Harry Potter, who is like just whipping out these new spreadsheets and updates and changes and all this sort of stuff. And you don't have to use them, but I mean, give them a go. And if they work for you, they work for you, right? He doesn't have to do that, but he loves doing it. And he enjoys being part of the community and for the people that they work for. And I use a couple of them and it, it makes you better at doing this, right? And then like we talk about fudge, right? And like he didn't have to do what he did in terms of like his methods and all this sort of stuff. He could have just gone on doing that himself and just been like, oh, I've got a little edge that nobody else has got. That's pretty cool. But it's like, no, 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 guys, here's how you do it. Do you want me to record a video? Can we share this with the community? How do we level everybody up? How do we make them better? And it's like, 
again, I, my question back to you guys is probably for you two from the start and then Lenny, since you've joined, like, did you ever think it was going to be this way? Did you ever think it was going to be a community like this? Or did you think it was just going to be, let's make people a shitload of units and put some money in people's pockets? I think JP can answer that because he definitely has more of the foresight or the visionary of like this business or this community. I feel like I'm always six to 12 months behind and I'll be like, fuck, I can see this. And he goes, mate, I reckon I texted you this 12 months ago. Like, <laughs> so I reckon JP can answer that question. Well, I would say no to the answer. Like I didn't see it becoming this. Yeah. But like when you say all that stuff, everyone sort of knows that internally who's been here for six months, right? They know that this isn't about tips. Yeah. But externally, I would say 90% of people wouldn't know that, which is something we have to address and change our brand and imaging and whatever else comes with it, right? But in terms of where did we think this was going to go? I mean, we've had plans to go into general stuff for sure. So yes, but we haven't actually done that yet. It's just happened. And we we're not charging people for, for mindset. Like that's mm. just what you get, right? Um, we're not charging people for a community. We're not charging people for discipline. Like that's, you sign up for tips because that's what you think you're signing up for, but you're getting that. And now we have to change. You sign up for this and you get the tips. That's yeah. I think what we need to do. And then that'll branch into broader things like finance. Not that we're going to teach people how to, like like financial managers or whatever the, whatever it is, but we're going to teach people maybe more about f like basic finance education. No one knows how to, like 18, 19 year olds don't even know how to like yeah, budgets and bank rolls. Bank and, and stuff. Yeah. It's like, this can go anywhere. And if you get a loyal community that are all on the same page, even just the way people think now about like just the world, you can just see the people have changed their mindset on like, because they've been taught how to think or because they've seen someone else in a situation do something or get... Um, inspired by you or Gator on a podcast because he said, stay broke if you want to keep your savings in your savings yeah. account at 20 years old. <laughs> and then they've taken action and then it's caused them to go and make 50K just from that one decision at the start. That's just, forget about the money. It is now, like I said, I made 300K off match betting. The money means jack shit. It's what that's now been able to allow me to do. Like I wasn't fuck you money, but like yeah. it kind of was at that age. Um, but now, now that's enabled me to get ahead, think better, just I'm just miles ahead of where I would have been if I was just sitting there fucking struggling. So yeah. it's it's just everything coming together. And you said something before about and Tom kind of hinted at it, you didn't say it. You joined this, right? And then you've got way better at another job or you you quit the other job and you yeah. went to this one. You're now gonna become way better and grow through that rank. There's probably like your gym's increasing, getting better. Yeah. There's all this shit happening, right? <laughs> Listen to a podcast yesterday. When bad shit happens to people, you can either turn that um, scenario into you becoming shit with it. So you hear people all the time, they lose their job, then their missus leaves them, then something else bad happens to them. That's not like, they're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. That is you deciding to, how you like act in that situation then makes you like then go to shit relationship you, you misses leaves you because you become a victim and stuff and you're complaining all the time and then something else happens whereas you can go here shit thing happens okay how am i going to react better 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 and then everything else becomes better yeah and that, that's just a way to for you for you to then get into another situation and then just act like that every time and it just becomes a habit and like tom says once you stack enough things on top of each other getting the reps in over and over again doing the task for a decade you just become really good at something and then that's it your life changes forever so yeah, that's it where the vision was, not sure it was that, but it is that now and I'm sure it's going to be even bigger in the future. And what I, about, I was just going to like really quickly, like the vision, I definitely had none. Like I'm glad he said no because there's no way like when you first started <laughs> that you see this. Nah, but nah. like, but the way that I just li literally written out like a series of events, right, for how this worked for me. So I was making good money match betting with JP, had yeah. done it myself as well. Then people started to find out that I was making money from match betting and then they wanted help or they wanted to know how to do it, or they wanted to know how to be shown it. And then it turned into like every Saturday, we just jump on a Zoom with like six or seven blokes and we'd all be betting on the same horses using the promotions and little system and turning the bonuses over. Then it started being that, but we just started to do it for free for complete strangers yeah. in Telegram. And then it started doing it again for more strangers for a small fee. And then those strangers turned into like known members of our community. Like these are like your poms or your harry potters or your yeah. platinum peats and then from there like 
now we've just grown a community of like that's literally how it started so to say that like you could see that vision not sure but like i now i can see visions of the future because i know what we've done and what we can do we've done it for a thousand forty platinum squad members done it for you know there are these guys in the mentorship now there are these guys that we're helping that message us like man i haven't punted since i watched your free content i never bought anything but changed my perspective so now i'm like i can see the vision mm. because we have all of these examples of what we've done works work for us work for you yeah work for all these other people in the community so it's like why can't this work for twenty thousand young australians yeah. well or why can't there be another level where it's like not only that let's move into this or like you know, are there guys in our community starting businesses that want to get involved and want to know how how the how have you grown this business to, to xyz or how do you get this community and it's like there are all these different pathways now and things that we can help and provide people because we've done it. Yeah. And that's what I think is most exciting. It's like the one to $10 to a hundred dollars to. Yeah. Same, it's the same cool. thing same for us. Thing. It's, yeah. it's happening now in front of our eyes and we'll, we'll double in size in the next 12 months. I'm certain yeah. from taking four years to get that and we'll probably well past that. Crazy. And then there'll be more things that'll open up. And then what about you Lenny? Like, cause obviously you've been here shorter. So when, when you started talking to these boys about like, well, here's what I can do and here's, what I think it's going to look like to what it is now. <laughs> what I was saying this to you guys the other day, it was a complete fucking shambles. When <laughs> I first, like when I first met these guys, I rock up and they're trying, JP's asking me what shirt he should wear in a video. And like, he's trying to work out where to film the video. And now it's just like, you're having these conversations, which are just fully irrelevant yeah. now to what they were back then. So we didn't have an office back then. Yeah. You came to my house and you were telling us all the shit that we did wrong. We just slowly, like, even though you were a nobody at that time, we still listened and took it on board. So there's always feedback we can improve on. But that's sh- like, yeah. Lenny probably doesn't have a vision. I'm not sure. I don't yeah. want to speak for him. But the whole process is the same. Yeah. yeah. He was in the community. He was making good money. We identified that he was making good money. Hey, come to Melbourne. Show us how you're making that ridiculous money. Oh, okay. Why don't you actually start teaching some of the guys in our community who are mm-hmm. smart and switched on and have the bankroll? Why don't you just teach them what you're doing? Like, there's the vision. And then we're going to have an army of these guys that are absolute weapons and think differently to other people and have these, like, the mindset that you now have around, like, I want to progress in my life. I want to take the piss out of the gym. Like, you know, I want to be healthy. I want to be better. Like, and then we have an army of these guys that that think and act like that. And it's like, what can we do next? Yeah, well, now Fudge is a team member. Like, there'll be many more of them that'll get into our team. Like, what do we do when we have 200 mentors? Yeah. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's that's exactly where it. it's going now. Yeah. And what can we do? What can we do with two hundred people that think the same way and are able to like make money at the drop of a hat and like have these ambitions and these goals? Like, what can we do then? Yeah. Which is crazy. Right? So it's I exciting. Think, I think the yeah. whole thing would be to get big enough where we just are known to be helpful individuals to change people's mindsets and their lives. Yeah. Like we've changed our YouTube background to change your mindset, change your life. That's what this is about, not yeah. make 10 units. Yeah, I want it to be like when I'm, like, this is probably like ridiculous, but I, like I want it to be like I'm going to join the system community because I've seen all these other people like change the way they think about things, level up, stop punting, whatever it may be, make more money, save more money. So I want to get in there and be involved in that because I want to be around like-minded individuals who aren't doing the same things that everyone else is doing. Yeah. That's what I think it's going to be going forward. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's uh, like I said, from when I first messaged you, it's like, I don't think either of us ever expected to be having this kind of conversation. Maybe not this combo, <laughs> but, I, but I promise you, I, I can find the messages. Maybe we can put them no. on. Like I definitely messaged JP and I was like, I promise you if this guy does it properly, <laughs> yeah. he will be very, very, very good at match betting. Yeah. Just based on knowing who you were, the way you looked at like super coach but stats and like you were like, you have that kind <laughs> of like, not addictive personality, but if you're going to do something, you do it properly. Like, well, that's it, man. Like, I could see it. I could see it and I'm glad that it's uh, come to fruition. Like for me, it's always been like, yeah, if, if you're going to do something, do it properly. But yeah, I mean, kind of like what JP alluded to earlier. It's like the constant, the constant hurdles and barriers. Like that's what stops people, right? It's like the first step is to actually jump in and, sign up and you know do the free course and understand how it all works and then you want to level up to platinum and then you're gonna i mean we've all had horror stories of like i literally just the other day i went to put on a bet and instead of putting 200 bucks on uh, instead of putting 20 bucks on i put 200 and it's like oh, happens shit okay oh well lost yeah. and 
again, 12 months ago, like I'd keep, I'd clip myself for that. I'd be like, fuck, you know, I'd be really pissed off. But yeah, now I'm yeah. just like, oh, okay, cool. You stuffed up. Like internet was laggy. You, you didn't, you didn't have the patience to do it. You just hit, you know, you were smashing the button and you know, whatever, who cares? All right. Like it's, it's only money. Like it's going to come back, but you know, people have those hurdles and then you start getting a couple, you might have a couple of accounts banned and people like me, it was like, okay, I guess this is kind of it. And it's like, well, no, there's other opportunities like keep going, keep pushing through, level up. And you, you know, just said we, there, it's, it's only money. Is that, <laughs> is that a new kind of mindset for you? Cause it definitely was for me. Like money, once you started seeing more of it and making more of it definitely changes your perspective of it. Um, I think my mindset around money has kind of changed and a lot of it, I don't want to dob people in, but like, for instance, one of the, one of the people that I work with now, um, she earns some pretty good money, but her budgeting's completely stuffed, right? To the point that like, like spending everything basically. Yeah, essentially. Right. Um, pretty common to the, to the point that like, like the other day, like her and her housemate got their water bill and she's like freaking the fuck out about paying her water bill. And I'm like, you get paid like pretty well. Like I was supporting a family of six on what you get paid, right? <laughs> how how are you and your single housemate who live in an apartment three blocks from here struggling or, or freaking out about paying a water bill? And it's like, oh, well, because you went out on the weekend, you went to the festival, you spent some money and spent some more money and did some silly things and all this sort of stuff. It's like, okay, cool. Well, if you got that money, go for it. But like I sat back and looked at that and I used to, and I still do have like a rainy day fund, right? I'm going to siphon a bit of money off just in case something happens, right? We need, we need money for whatever. But I'm at the, I'm at the point now where it's not that I have so much money, right? Like I'm not rich. I don't, I still don't feel like I'm a rich person, but I think because of what's happened in my professional life and I can kind of see the vision of where that's going to go and what that's going to look like in terms of like financial reward. And because of what's happening with the system and, you know, I mean, I'm just talking about now, like I'm having thousand dollar weeks and, you know, 3k weekends and things like that. It's like my attitude towards it is kind of like, I know that it's going to be there going forward. I think a lot of people maybe kind of get paralysis or they get caught in like well what if i don't have the money like 100 and you t i think jp mentioned before about and you guys are talking about you know if you want to be broke keep your money in a savings account right like just let it sit there and i think people a lot of people think that that's the right thing to do because it's like well what if i lose my job or what if something happens and i need to have the cash there yeah. that's like but we live in a world now where right or wrong if your money is not working for you, if you're not using money to make money, you're getting left behind. Mm. Like that's just... Well, it's better than spending yeah. it, but if you're not spending it... If, if, you're, not, it, you're, if you're not spending fully, it... I didn't have savings through my 20s. Yeah. It was all in my match betting because I yeah. knew the match betting was turning over a ridiculous return but, on investment compared to the savings. But I think a lot of the mindset because of what's happening and look, I'm not an economist or an expert yeah. or anything like that, but I think a lot of people look at it as almost where I was 12 months ago, it's like, okay, well, I'm in a job, I get paid pretty well, I'll save everything I can just in case. And it's like, you know, just in case I lose my job, just in case the car breaks down, just in case, right? And it's like, but as that happens, you know, um, inflation, cost of living, all of this, we hear about it all the time in the news. And it's like, the 50 bucks cash that you have in your hand is not, and I think we mentioned this potentially in the last podcast, actually, that the 50 bucks that you have in your hand is worth less than it was 12 months ago it's still mm. 50 bucks but you're going to get less than that for that 50 bucks so if you're not turning that 50 bucks into 70 bucks to to keep up with things then you've actually gone backwards even though you think you're saving money and so like my attitude towards money now is it's like i've got cash to to use and i've got cash to buy the things i need and take my family on holiday and do all this sort of stuff i've got cash that's sitting in savings just in case but the majority of my money is going to work right it's it's i'm using money to make money now and i'm i am way more aggressive with that than i was 12 months ago you know it used to be like well i've got this little bit here that i can kind of play with and i'll take risks on it and you know i'm prepared to lose that and my mindset around kind of everything that i have across all my accounts now is it's like 
like I said before, I started with two and I built to 20. Well, I'm actually closer to 40 now across all of my accounts. So it's like, well, I don't, it's not just my 2K investment anymore. It's like, I've got 40 grand to play with. I say play with. It's like, I've got 40 grand that I can put to work, right? I can up my unit size. I can get more accounts. I can open more bookies. I can move money around to do other things, right? I can take advantage of more promos. I can put more bets on. I can grow this exponentially. And through the mentorship program, I can do it in less time than I was doing before. And so now instead of having a $500 weekend and high-fiving myself, I'm having a $1,000 weekend and going, yeah, cool. You'll be and having a three K weekend soon. Yeah. What I think, what I think, maybe subconsciously as well is contributing to this, whether you're fully aware of it or not, is that instead of having your five grand or your ten grand as your rainy day fund, as the thing that you have to fall back on, what you actually have now is a new set of skills yep. and a different mindset. Yeah. Whereas it's not like if I lose my job, at least I have my ten thousand dollars in my savings. It's if I lost my job, I actually have the skills to either make more money doing something that I'm doing already, or I have the skills and the understanding that I could grab another job somewhere else because I can go and get that. So yeah. the difference is instead of having the, the cash is the fallback, like, oh, at least I have my 10 grand if something bad goes wrong. It's like, nah, I'm I'm a weapon now. Yeah. And so if something bad goes wrong, mm-hmm. I'm either just going to go make more money because I've gone to another level, or I'm just going to go command another job because that's the kind of person that I am now. And it's not even just commanding another job, right? It's my my self-confidence and my self-belief and my understanding i always understood what i am capable of and and what i can and can't do you know within business and teams and and you know that sort of stuff but you know one of the things that kind of has happened over the, the last few months is that my entry level not that i expect to be changing jobs anytime soon but my entry level for my professional career is now completely different of course it is right as it's like if something was to happen and I was to walk in the office tomorrow and they say, thanks very much. See you later. It's like the, the jobs that I am looking for are completely different than what I would have looked for when I found this job six months ago. And the financial rewards for that are far greater than what I would have been expecting or anticipating six months ago. And, you know, maybe it's a bit of a, a a long bow to draw, but the argument could be made as it's like, yes, I've got 40 grand near enough in, like my betting accounts but i'm also like a 40 grand better off professionally because of the system yeah it's like you could make that up per year but you could make that argument right yeah it's like i would not be in the position that i'm in if my mindset had not changed around this community and through through match betting and through what's happened right i wouldn't have taken that chance i wouldn't be in this position and so i can sit back in you know three months time when i do my taxes and i go jesus like you know i'm getting ripped here but I've put plenty more in my pocket because of this opportunity and because I backed myself in to do what I'm doing now because of what's happened from fucking messaging this guy two years ago. And oh, have you thought about making this a business? Like- well, that's what J- <laughs> yeah, that's literally what JP like says in a lot of these videos recently. It's like, you can either like hope stuff happens or you can literally just go and make it happen. Yeah. And the other thing is you have either the, the cost mindset where everything's so expensive. Like for example, there are people that don't buy Platinum, right? Yeah. Cost a thousand dollars, but you never looked at it as a cost. But looking at it as a cost to save yourself a thousand dollars, potentially for people that at the same time as you didn't join because it was a thousand dollars, you're now in this position where you're here, and you would spend that thousand dollars at the drop of a hat on no. like in a sports service or whatever. It doesn't matter, but you'd spend it, right? Whereas there are those people that didn't spend the thousand dollars two years ago, at the same time as you, that still wouldn't spend a thousand dollars because mm. it's like, oh, you know, it's a thousand dollars out of my savings. And they don't account for all of that personal growth, all of the money that you've made, all the skills that you have that they don't have, unfortunately, because they simply saved themselves $1,000. And to me, that's the most glaring thing that's changed in your whole, everything. It's just like, it's like the model, like take the chance. And you haven't just done, it's not all on your own accord. You've you've said JP pushed the absolute living shit out of you and Lenny's going to push you now. But like, if you're open to being pushed and getting the most out of yourself, yeah. As opposed to trying to save every cent or every dollar, man, where you, where you end up in 12, 24, 36 months is just, there's just no comparison. Yeah. Well, what do you gain out of, let's just say you had 10K to your name and you're considering joining the Platinum Squad, which is 1100 bucks. If you don't join, what do you gain? Yeah, you keep, no, you you keep you, a thousand bucks. 50 bucks interest. 
at the end of the year. <laughs> well, no, you, seriously, but that's you, what you gain. You gain $1,100. <clears throat> that's it. What do you reckon? Like, I mean, so my so argument... What do you think about that? My argument wouldn't be that you've gained $1,100. You you already have the $1,100. Well, but yeah. But technically... Right? If, so it's like... Yeah, but you look at it as like a minus 1100 or like I, comparing it to that. Like if you're looking at purely as dollars, that is the only thing. But then the upside of the other way, what do you gain by joining? It's like all those things and the upside of being able to make... Fuck, let me so make 200K. So here's how I would position it, right? And... Like uh, even when I first talked to you guys, I didn't have 10 K. Mm. I had half that. Yeah. Right. And I spent two, like I had about five and I spent two of that just signing up. You know, I yeah. think, I, I think I mentioned it in my three month podcast, like Tommy stiffed me full price for a yearly sub. Yeah. It was like 700 and something. He didn't even give me a discount. Right. <laughs> like Jesus. But, um, <laughs> to get you here. Yeah. But, but that's it. Right. And so I, I think, we talk about mindset and then like the way people approach things, like a, a different way of looking at it is you're not, you're not spending $1,100 on platinum, right? You are, you are purchasing an asset. That's what the platinum squad is, right? It's not tangible. It's not a, a car or a watch or, you know, something like that. You can't feel it, but it, it is an asset because it opens the door from a mindset point of view. And, I mean, it's not a, it's not a, you know, massive psychological shift. It's not a huge thing it, specifically in the Platinum Squad content. That's like, well, it doesn't happen you know, in one it, day. It will, it will be in a few months. That's all going to be in there. But yeah. But my <laughs> argument, my argument around Platinum is that what Platinum does is it, it gets you in the club, right? Like it gets you out on the course with people like myself who have had their minds changed with. Your Harry Potters and your fudges and I was going to say while you're speaking about while you're speaking about who that gets you access to and who's in there, you did mention before that you wanted to kind of give a shout out to a few of the people <laughs> in the in the community. So, yeah, are there a, a few that have helped you along the journey, particularly that you want to just give a little special mention to? So I've got a bit of a list, but the f the first one I'll fire off is Can um, I use their non real names. Yeah, yeah. No, I saw I, a list I used, yesterday used that was like in, one Instagram on the, oh, with, with the G. That was his real name. The G. G oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. That's it. fine. That's uh, Wemby. <laughs> That's all good. Um, yeah, the first one that I that I that I promised that I'd shout out was Geordie, who who sent something through and asked that I read it out. And I don't know if JP heard Lenny spoil it before. I hope he didn't. I didn't hear any. So Geordie sent this through for me, and he's like, because I asked obviously for questions and feedback, and we've got a couple of questions to go through. But but Geordie specifically said, "Hey, I've got this screenshot." I refer back to this occasionally. I think the whole community needs to be reminded about this and I'll see if JP can, can pick up. So this is a this is a post that was put in the Discord on February 6th, 2021. Number, number one, thou shalt respect thy account, defence and sustainability. Number two, thou shalt respect thy account, defence and sustainability. Number three, Thou shalt respect thy account, defense, and sustainability. Number four, patience. There's no quick fixes. Number five, thou shalt complete all sections in the correct order, video, and descriptions. Number six, thou shalt track every bet in the recording sheets. Number seven, thou shalt not take shortcuts. Long term is the priority. Number eight, thou shalt ask questions and not be shy. Number nine, thou shalt show discipline to follow steps one through eight. And number 10, thou shall repeat and win forever. That was from Geordie. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments of the system. Do you remember writing that, JP? Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, it's still all valid. It's yeah. It's just changed and there's been a lot of layers added on top of that. Absolutely. Um, but if you stuck to those rules, I think you'd be going okay. Yeah. I'd I mean, say Pete's gone, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you followed him. <laughs> It sounds like he didn't see him. I think um, <laughs> until Jordy sent them. I had I'd never I'd not I'd not seen that before personally. No, those are the inadvertent rules. Though. They were the it's original rules in the Discord. I think I think over the journey, you boys have made it pretty clear about what I'm supposed to do and not supposed to do, and yeah, 100%. the rules that I'm meant to follow. So that was Jordy. Any other special uh, mentions? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll reel them off and then I'll get to a, a couple of questions that we had. Um, so people that have just been in touch along the way in terms of the community through Instagram, through Discord, whatever it is. Uh, Gav, Hugh, Mad MK, Kinshiro, who I met at the, yeah. the Bret Hart event um, a couple of weeks ago. Couldn't believe it. We'd been talking about wrestling on Discord. 
um, when the opportunity to go see Bret Hart came up, he was like, oh, are you going? I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, cool. And then just rolled in, shook hands. Um, yeah, I mean, that was that was just a cool moment. That's sick. Um, Kroof, Merton, obviously, who you guys have done an interview with before. Yeah. Um, have had a lot of good conversations with him around stuff. Bonus boy, Geordie, we mentioned. Cousin J-Dub, King Cripper, Mitchell, J-Dollar, Stone Cold, Lord of the Mug, CP. Uh, and the two guys that have to be nominated for the the system hall of fame, obviously Harry Potter, who just on just to. on Harry Potter and Fudge and he, Fudge, Fudge is the other one in the hall of fame. I know Harry Potter will be listening to this, but he's fully changed his life over the last like two months. He's when I when I first spoke to him, he's. I don't know if he I don't know if he'd be okay with me doing this because he reached out to me about the mentorship program. Yeah. Actually, let me go. Let me see if I can go find. While, while we're waiting for that, I'm just going to take Fudge down a notch and say that unfortunately as he hasn't been part of the community for 12 months. He's not eligible <laughs> for Hall of Fame status. We're actually so going to do Hall of Fame. <laughs> like that wall, Sucked in, the Fudge. The wall on the backside of this is actually going to become a Hall of Fame wall. But Harry Potter comes up uh, pretty regularly, so I don't want to spoil anything, but she's... Uh, I mean, Harry's... One, I think. Harry is an absolute, an absolute monster. Um, the I'm thing the, is, he hasn't made a ridiculous amount of money yet. But his impact in the community is has been crazy. Yeah, I mean, he. I don't know how many other people he talks to. Obviously, I'm messaging him back and forth a fair bit. Um, I'm just trying to go back and find where he messaged me. Maybe if none of us just talk right now, so this that when is, you find it, then Tricky can just edit it out really easy. So this was Feb seventh, and again, I hope he doesn't no, mind me reading this out. Hey mate, hope you're well. I'm looking into the mentorship program and heard you've joined. JP probably shouldn't have told me that, but how are you finding it? <laughs> and so I said, hey man, yeah, I've been umming and ahhing on it since like November. I've only had two sessions. If I'd been following from day one, the way Lenny set me up, I'd be 3K better off if I had to join back then. It's a big investment, but you get heaps out of it. Legit, we've only covered bonuses. Someone like yourself will probably know more about what he's talking about, but it's pretty eye-opening. And he came back to me later that day. Sick. I'll be joining as well. Just getting the misses across it all. It's a no-brainer. <laughs> if we want to take things seriously and making li- make a living out of this, we need to do it. That's so the conversation sick. went on from there. But um, yeah, I mean, he's he's like just an absolute pillar in the community, really. Yeah. The work Simil- he Honestly, in. a bit of a similar story to Pete as well in terms of like full-time work. Got to like that 15K figure. I've been doing it for a couple of years. Basically well, messaged JP, said he was going to give up. Like yeah, It's was, so similar. Done. End, of, done. end of November, fully done. He's like, I'm out. I'm frustrated. He goes, I can't do this like anymore sort of thing. And I'm like, all right, let's have a chat. And then a month later, he's working with Lenny. Lenny went up to wherever in the state to get him. Um, yeah. But he, he'll be someone who and, – and even him now, like his sequence of events is similar in the way that he's – Yeah, what's happened outside job, of his match yeah. betting is like – Similar to you. Like he's just, just taking everything by the balls. Like yeah. More self-confidence – Sees, sees a better life for himself going forward. Just doesn't put up with shit that he doesn't need to. He doesn't have fuck you money, neither do you, like no. you said. But, he's, but he has that attitude of like, oh, I'm going to go get what I want or what I deserve. And, and that's sick. Yeah. So shout out to Harry Potter as well. Easy. Do you want to listen to content like this while you're mowing the lawn, driving to the gym, going to the grocery store? All these podcasts are actually available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. If you find it easier, check them out there. Enjoy the rest of the show. I got a couple of questions from Instagram and then obviously any other questions you guys have from your end. Uh, first one came from J-Mac on Discord. Mm-hmm. Um, he had asked me, he wants to know about my favorite method for making money and which methods actually made me the most money. Um, so I think I spoke about it in the 12-month pod. For me, I feel like in terms of a service, like tips and all that, I would love the sports service. The convenience of it is just like nuts um i know you guys only let is it 120 150 150 150 people into it it's currently full um which when it comes up again i don't know if you're going to run it again over summer and then winter next year like anyone who gets the opportunity if there's a spot available i absolutely recommend taking it again don't think about the cost that you're putting into it you're purchasing an asset you 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 buy it yeah because again the the convenience of it is awesome and then it's putting the tips out you know, you get plenty of time, you get plenty of notice, you can plan your day out, you can map around it, you can work out how you're going to do your non-promos. Um, and for someone like me who, you know, on a Friday or a Thursday, the, you know, the tips come out, you know, sort of early afternoon, it's like, awesome. I can have a quick look. What accounts am I going to need to hit? I can make a, you know, scribble something down on a notepad at work and then, 
you know, take my 15 minute break in the afternoon and kind of map out what that's going to look like. Drive home, get home at like 6.30 and then I already know what I'm doing and it's just bang, 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 bang and it's done and takes half an hour to get all the tips on plus all my non-promos and not have to think about it and that's awesome. Um, in terms of, I mean, the horses have probably made me more money over over the journey. Um, if I had to pick, pick one particular event, obviously the uh, the Pride of Jenny race, I went nuts on that thing. Um, that came through in the, the sports system tips. There were a couple of promos that we could take advantage of. Um, obviously, the, the boys found some EV with that. It was the most insane race that I've ever watched. I'm not a horse racing expert, even though I've been watching races now for nearly two years. I've seen Pride of Jenny run a couple of times and do that, where she just gets a mile out in front. A couple of times she's been run down. A couple of times she's finished. I was like doing cartwheels in my lounge room <laughs> watching her you know she's 30 lengths in front there's a de demolition job <laughs> i absolutely love it uh the the photo the photo on the on the finish line is actually my background at, on my computer at work <laughs> so when i close everything down declan bates just pointing just pointing at me he's like mate that one was for you that was <laughs> that's the most that's by far that was that those two and a half minutes was the most fun i've had since starting we've obviously had some absolute fill-ups and the community is always awesome to get around but that one in the sports system chat i look at that more so nuts. like for you that's not like <laughs> cool you made money but i think the way that i hear you say that story that that to me is like you giving yourself a pat on the back for like because that's that's only made because you did two two years of like hard work yeah so yeah, that's, that's just like a good. well done pete like that's what you get for for doing this and and then there'll be another pride of jenny moment in you know before we have our next podcast at year three. And so, it would be something completely different. So the immediate aftermath of that, obviously I was going nuts and my missus is like, what have you done now? Like, <laughs> what have they what have they tipped you into? Like, go on, tell me, are we ordering takeout tonight? What's the plan? Like, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Lobster baby. So the, the calm down effect after, after that for me, obviously, you know, cashed in pretty heavily on, on that that one tip with you know the promos that we could take advantage of what number but how much did i make mm. personally 1400 nice off that one race but see like in comparison to everything you've made it isn't that much that's what i'm saying i don't no, no, think no. it was it's not the money per se but i'll tell you so from from when i calmed down and i thought about it in my head i was like okay but if i hadn't taken the opportunity on the mentorship program what would i have missed out on what how much how much less would i have made off that and it's significant right and so that then for me was almost like calming down and, and analyzing it and thinking about it yeah you get hyped and you know love the moment and I've, yeah. I've probably watched the race 50 times right like that's so it's just insane to watch but sitting back and reflecting on it it's like okay but if i hadn't taken advantage of the mentorship what would that have looked like i mean i'm still in the sports system i'd tell you would have quit no i don't i don't would no, i have quit match no, betting quit. yeah Probably yeah. That's what I mean. I, I we this podcast it's right fucked. Think this about that. this podcast that we'd be doing right now would probably be like, hey, this is the end of Platinum Pete's story. Here's what's happened. I've lost too many accounts. I'm yeah, done. See you later. Peace. Thanks very much. <laughs> I hope peace. you've I hope you've enjoyed the journey. I made you know twenty two grand or whatever it was in you know Good a luck. year and a bit. All the you best. Can, you can do the same. Twenty grand is going to help me out a lot. Thanks very much. Yeah. Like, still legi a good story. Legitimately, still a great, it's a great story. story. Yeah. And and. That's the journey that I thought I was going to go on when we started this, right? That, that's a story that a lot of people right now, they don't have a podcast, but if they're listening to this, like people who have quit be at or least thrown in the towel, at least yeah, more, and just like not knowing where to go next and now that pathway is there, come back involved and ask about it because that is what the difference is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so the the other question that I had to get to was from Droy or D-Roy, apologies, yep. I don't know which way around that goes. Um, asked me about how long it takes me to update the spreadsheet. He says it's doing his head in. Um, he said, I did two, I did two weeks on Betfair. It took me 30 minutes, but it was painful. To, oh, it's to just update. like retrospective though. Yeah. yeah so yeah. he's not, so he's not putting, he's not putting his, his, uh, he's not updating as he goes. He's yeah. like, all right, I can't be bothered yeah. doing it. I'm going to sit down one night and just do it all. So a couple of things to that. So the first probably 12 months that I was doing this, I was religious with putting it in. Right. Follow everything, follow everything, follow everything, partly because I needed to know where my profit was at for, you know, the podcasts and to keep people updated through Instagram and all that sort of stuff. 
um, as I hit the, kind of that 12 month mark, lost a few accounts, I was feeling the burnout. I was like, I'm not, I just can't be bothered. I'm not even going to, I won't worry about it anymore. And so at that point, I then pivoted to just doing like a monthly update on my accounts. Like I'll just go and record all my account balances at the end of the month and see how much they've gone up and down. And that'll tell me if I've made money or not. Um, since jumping back in the mentorship program, I've now gone back the other way where it's like, as soon as I put the bet on, I go and record it. As soon as I put the bet on, I go and record it. Um, not because I want to be able to give live profit updates, not because I do that, but it helps me reinforce and understand a that yes, this is working, and that I'm just more so looking off. at the data to make well, sure yeah. they're doing things properly. Yeah, that's exactly. He's made spreadsheets. Exactly yeah. This has only happened in the last what six weeks. Mm. So like, there's um, been now. That's an expectation now. When you join mentorship, he's literally going to watch your bets in real time and provide yeah. you feedback because there's improvements that can be made. If your yeah. bonus turnover like is at 81, PT. yeah, if your bonus turnover is at 81, you want to get it to 100. Yeah. Like he's going to tell you, okay, we're going to fix this. This is what you did wrong here. Otherwise, you're just guessing. Yeah, huge. You, you don't get anywhere with guessing. Huge. Um, so I guess my message to anyone that's like kind of burning out or frustrating with filling in the, the spreadsheets, have a chat to your coach. Obviously, first and foremost, in terms of, you know, ways that you can change it up. Obviously, doing it as you go is the most efficient way to do it because it sure. takes 10 seconds to, to update sure. it. Yeah. Yes, it's a lot sometimes, but so If you're what? watching the race, there is no world where you can't track Just put it on. It. Like yeah. I, yeah, if you can spend two minutes watching the race, you can spend eight seconds putting like, it in the spread. Yeah. yeah um, and the only other thing is, I mean, we talk about him all the time, but Harry, if you're in Platinum, he's always open to chats. He's put in so many different variations and versions of spreadsheets. The multi-bookie one... He's got the the calculator for um, Brownie. Was it Brownie? Oh, I can't think. Of. Greenies method. Oh, yeah, the yeah, multi yeah. method. Are they all in the they're, they're all the ones yeah, yeah. that like, he's added. They're, yeah, they're all in the spreadsheet. Like, yeah. The yeah. amount of work, the amount of work that he does and puts in. Um, I don't know if he's reached out to Lenny or if the one that you're using now is part of what he built. I know he talked to me about like, hey, I'm doing this. What he's he's got another spreadsheet that he's done now for the mentorship thing. To, the way we track bonuses. Yeah, he's a he's taken one I've given him and just made it bonkers. <laughs> it's like. Again, and this is what we talk about with the community. So for someone like like Droy, who's you know maybe feeling a little bit of burnout, it's like that's what the community is there for. Reach out to the people Definitely. who are open, you know, who are experts on this stuff. You coach people in the community. Someone can help you. It may just be grinding it out for another couple of weeks and kind of you know like going into the gym and you start lifting and you're like, ow, that really hurts and I'm sore. And it's like, but that's okay. Just go back and push through it because like it's your body adjusting right it's your brain and your temperament have to adjust to be able to fill the spreadsheet in it can be a bit dry sometimes but when you sit back in six months and understand you know where you're losing money or where you can make more money that's uh i think you can always track important. like after hearing all this stuff that because i did match betting for seven years right this is a people probably would not believe this but since seeing Lenny teach the mentors and learning the new stuff, I had no idea about. Like when I was a match better, I had zero efficiency. My, oh, yeah. It was just on brute, did I when I was force, betting, to be honest. <laughs> brute force. No, was like a lot disgusting. of time, just like like actually disgusting, like yuck, right? <laughs> but now seeing, and the reason I don't match bet now is because I wanted to direct my energy and time into the business, mm. right? That's I've said that for three years, and it didn't give me the personal reward that kind of I wanted from the same as a business, right? But now. After seeing him do that, I'm going to be starting match betting again. Yeah. And because I know that the time and energy required is not what I thought it was to do what I want to do. And that'll just be a Saturday operation that is just there. Now, I haven't started it yet, but I do have plans to do that. And why I'm telling you this is because me and Tom did some last month and we tracked every single bet. Yeah. And how many bets did we do? Not sure. I don't know, like a, a thousand lot. or something. A lot. And that was every bet tracked. And if you think that you cannot track it then you're not disciplined enough Simple. yeah just do it no it's actually not it genuinely is not hard just just track it if you, you pretend someone's going to chop your leg off if you don't track it J just track it JP's, on, jp's getting into clip mode here he's well going know. back to be fair to grab J a few people I mean, I like, track no, shit. jp sounds like he sounds like a hero now but yeah. i'm just going to fully out him no, like, i, I used track. to get text messages from him like sunday 4 a.m <laughs> He's like, I'm going to bed now. I just spent four hours tracking yeah. all of my bets. Because oh. I did it in hindsight. I'm like, you fucking idiot. Because I went and <laughs> fucking screenshotted like half the bets and oh, like, no. bro, just do it at the same time. Like even when we yeah. do it together, he'd be like, oh, I haven't like I haven't done the spread yet. I haven't got the bets, but I've got the screenshots. Like if you're if you're on the spread, you can put him in. Right. I'm like, what do you mean screenshot? Just fucking write it in. Minus, <laughs> minus seven hours sleep. Yeah, so stupid. <laughs> but anyway, we, we live and we learn. I That's think, well, I don't know unless you have any other questions. Like I feel like we've nailed so many different topics and 
and given a really good perspective as to like where you started, where you've got to. Again, I said at the start, go and watch all the other podcasts. If you got here and then you're like, oh, well, it's easy to say now, mate, go and watch the first one. Go and watch month three. Like the change is ridiculous. Like honestly ridiculous. Go watch the first check-in where I said, I can't wait to make six grand. And Legit do. though. But like, yeah, because people like watch this for the first time and think, oh, easy for him to say now. He's been doing it for two. Mate, go and watch the first one. Go and watch the second one. You also haven't done as much in terms of like profit and stuff, but you still do post regularly or share your thoughts and feelings on your Instagram. What's yeah. your handle there? So people can uh, see at, that. At Pete Platinum. Pete Platinum. On Instagram. Um, podcast. Yeah, my, my podcast, not really progressing at the moment. We'll leave that for another time. Okay. <laughs> okay. But so, so Pete Platinum on Instagram, I'm sure you're always welcome and open to fielding questions uh, or... Every week I'm yep. getting questions from people either yeah, about joining up or who have joined or who want, you know, tips and tricks. A lot of the time I just refer them back to you guys. You know more about it than I do. I, f I feel like what's kind of happened with me and, and what will probably start happening with, you know, my social media going forward is is... You know, much like I gave an update a few weeks ago where I had that 3K weekend, you know, and I highlighted I hadn't really done a profit update for a while because I think I'm, we're sort of beyond that. Like anyone that's been following me for a while understands like the system works and you make money from it and it's not about that anymore. I think the conversations that I'm having with people more and more is not about well, how much money can you actually make. It's more about mindset. It's more about, you know, helping people deal with burnout. It's helping people kind of, push through those hurdles that they're facing when they come up. Should I get platinum? Should I not? How do I go up unit size? What do I do here? You know, I just want your advice before I go to the coaches, that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, anyone that wants to reach out, absolutely reach out. And yeah, you go. Question for you. You say all that about the profit. What? Are you, so what are your goals? Yeah. Like, can you put a profit figure still? Are you aiming towards something or you don't know? So based on what's happened over the last two months um, in terms of, kind of how much extra I've made. And I actually just had a quick look at what I did kind of before all this. So last year, my bonus turnover, or up until this point, my bonus turnover was about 80%, 79%. That was kind of before I joined the mentorship program. Now, just based on bonus, it's like pushing 100. So even, even on that, last year with like one set of accounts, if that was at 100%, you know, you're looking at... What was your volume? Bonus, total bonus. So my net my net gain off bonus last year was thirty seven and a half. But obviously then there's like your non promos and all that sort of stuff go into it. But I don't see I don't see any reason why over the next twelve months I wouldn't make seventy grand. Nice. Easy. That's and, and that's that might that might be conservative, right? And I might still be in my shell a little bit about that sort of stuff and Lenny kind of half smirked. He's like, mate, you've got no idea what's coming. <laughs> but like again, well, just uh, like to put uh, that number into perspective, right? You've made, what, 40 in two years? Yeah. And you're just saying you're going to make 70 in one I'll, year? I'll, I can push for double that in the next 12 months. In 12 months? Yeah. So like, yeah. So I, it, like you can do the you can do the math on that, but that's that is that's the definition. Like you look up compounding effects so it's, in it's, the dictionary, and that is what it is. I make so 40K in two years. I'm going to make 70K in one year in my third year. Yeah. So it's, it's early May 2024. I don't see any reason why May 2025 we're not sitting down and I'm close to 120 grand. Profit. Yeah, well, remember that 120 to 150 k figure. Yeah. Like, and I was saying, what do you have to do to get there? I honestly don't think you're that far off yeah. that stage now. Yeah. Yeah. Which so is that's what we're working crazy. to towards, like profits. So accountability wise, that's that's the goal. What else? If we sit here in 12 months' time and chat again and catch up. What yeah. else needs to be ticked off, or what else are you trying to do? Over the next twelve months, mate, I'm gonna be. What does it look like for you? Shredded. So yeah. Gonna be just, let's go. Um, no, I'm obviously, but yeah, back in the gym with a coach full time. We talked about that off air. You know, part of this whole mindset change was kind of telling myself and making excuses. I had a 24 hour gym, and it was kind of like, oh, you know, I'll go and work out. But it's like, I wasn't lifting heavy. I wasn't planning workouts properly. You know. Had a bad sleep, didn't go. Yeah, yeah, had a bad sleep, woke up and it's raining and it's like, oh yeah, man, yeah. it's like I don't want to walk for 10 minutes in the rain and yeah. like that kind of thing. So now I, I, I'm up at 4.30 most mornings, go to the gym. If I can't get there in the morning, like yesterday, I, I went at night then you know, get up this morning and just push through it. And, you know, much like Lenny and, and you guys and all that sort of stuff, for me, having that coach there who's kind of like 
mapped it out and it's like, all right, you know, today we're hitting lower body. So we're doing squats, we're doing deadlifts, we're doing hip thrusts, we're doing, you know, whatever it is. And it's like, okay, cool. Well, I'll put some weight on and I'll do the lift. It's like, all right, well, now put more weight on. Okay, all right, I'll put more weight on. It's like, all right, well, now do more reps. It's like, okay, well, I'll do more reps. And, you know, like we did a, we did a, a series of strength tests about two weeks ago and everything. And so it was just like pushing for like one rep max. What can you do? And um, I'll actually go back in my notes because I recorded it all to talk about it, which is cool. Um, uh, where did I put yeah, it? it's there. Working out. There we Gym's go. Cool. a great one for showing you that you can always do more because people think they've got like one rep left in them. Yeah. But if you said it got a gun to your head, do another 10, they'll do 10. That means you're, you're nowhere near fatigue level. And that's something that a coach will help with. So there are a couple, there's a couple of mindset things around that. Um, to give you an idea, so when I first started, um, I was doing hip thrusts around 150 kilos. It's now at 210. Um, I was doing deadlifts around 110. Now it's at 165. I was benching 65. That's now at 85. I was squatting about 100. It's now at 130. And that's like full, like, ass to grass, up, squat, racket, away you go. Um, a couple of things around that, like, I, I saw... Um, I saw a thing pop up on it might have been Instagram or whatever it was a guy talking about working out and he's like you talk about gun to your head right and if I said right gun to your head do as many push-ups as you possibly can and you tell me I can do 50 push-ups right I was like cool so a lot of people without proper training they'll go to the gym they'll do 50 push-ups and they'll be tired and they'll be sore and they'll go but I've done 50 push-ups right I pushed myself to the limit that was a good workout and he goes I'm going to go to the gym today and I'm going to do 25 push-ups and you're going to take tomorrow off because you're sore mm. but I'm going to go to the gym and do 25 push-ups and then you're going to take the day off after that and not do push-ups because you're recovering or work came up. But I'm going to go to the gym and do 25 more push-ups. And it's like at the end of the week, you've done 100 push-ups because you've gone twice and done 50. But I've gone every day and done 25. And so I've done 125 push-ups. So I'm in front of you, even though I've been doing less work. And that's the same kind of thing with match betting, right? Is it's like, just get the reps in, get the reps in, start with your $10 units build 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 and then you can lift heavier and then you can push your limits and then you can go up and so you know again the whole mindset shift like being back in the gym and doing that my aim for this year is by the end of the year my aim by my birthday which is in later in the year um is i want to be able to squat double my body weight so the aim is to get over a 200 kilo squat what if, um, you, what if your body weight drops well that's that's, that's the idea that's, way to get through that goal but that's the idea yeah, right yeah. is it's is it's at the moment I'm sitting around 120 in terms of body weight. So the plan is What's that down? I was almost 160. Fuck, oh, man. That that's was, on, that's that was, unbelievable. That was about two years ago. So if you go back and watch the three-month podcast, especially. So when you first joined, you were the, what, like with the, us. The, the, the three-month three podcast, I'm sitting on the couch or in the chair in a blue hoodie. I was about 150 kilos or something right. like that at that point. And you're 120 now. And I'm about 120 And now. you're shooting for... 100. So the aim is to get the aim is by the end of the year to be to be under 100 kilos and do a 200 kilo squat. That's 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 the plan. So what's that in two and a half years? You go and make 100 grand match betting. You lose 50 kilos. You get a better job. Yeah. yeah. Tick tick tick. Yeah. Not bad. No, not a not a bad not a bad way to get. <laughs> not a bad way to go question. about it. What's what's all like your his wife? Yeah. 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 What is? How has this affected her? Um, has she been brought along? She like getting better as well. It's funny, I've actually, uh, I actually joked to her in the lead up to this podcast and I'm like, I should talk to the boys and the next podcast they do should be an interview with her, not with me in the room. Like, I'm not here. Yeah. And you guys just hit her with all How do we those set sorts that of questions. Well, I'll, I'll talk to her about it. Yeah. Because I, yeah, be, sure. I think it'd be fascinating to get her thoughts because we haven't always been on the same page about it. There's been, and I talked about it on the 12 month pod, you know, there's been plenty of times where it's like, you know, taking my dad and we go into the golf club for lunch and we're sitting at the table and kind of nothing's happening and it's a Saturday afternoon. So I'll just open my phone and put yeah, a couple of tips through. And she's like, she's like, what the fuck are you doing? Put your yeah, phone no, away. Yeah. And I'm like, get off I'm, like I'm like, nothing's happening. Like dad's gone to get a beer. I'm just putting, like, it takes me 30 seconds to put some tips on. Like, fuck off. <laughs> right. Um, same, same deal. Like there was another, there was another day. I had like an RDO on a Wednesday and uh, my daughter also had a curriculum day from school. And so we took her down to Mornington beach. It was a really nice day. Went down to the beach and we're walking along the beach and like my daughter's out in the water, like flipping around and all this sort of stuff. And my wife's watching her and all this. And I'm a hundred meters away walking along the beach, 
like just firing a few tips off and i'm like well i can't go in the water because i got my phone in my pocket right like so i'll just kind of stand you know knee length in the water oh my phone buzzed oh shit no i just fire that off yeah yeah good good cartwheel right that kind of thing oh, where is she? those those <laughs> those, those those sorts <laughs> of things and so so That's what I was going but so early days those sorts of things came up and and like part of me justified it with well i'm making money and like supporting I'm, I'm just standing here so like I might as well. It takes 30 seconds to put a tip on. Who cares? And then over the journey, it's kind of been like, just miss the day. Yeah. Like, who cares? I, and I remember talking about it on the 12-month the pod. Took my wife away for a weekend and it was a fill-up day. We went like plus 18 or something like that. And I'm checking the alerts and all this sort of stuff. I just muted my phone. I'm just like, I don't care. Like, whatever. Like, I'm in the city. I'm at a hotel. We're going to a spa. It's like, just turn off. Who Enjoy cares? Yeah. Missed out. Because the same thing has also happened when I've, you know, taken my kids out for the day or, you know, we've gone to the movies or whatever because my kids really want to do something and I've missed a day where we go like negative 11. It's like, all right, cool. Comes out in the wash, right? Yeah. It's old mate, the fucking penguin watching the washing machine, right? Like it just comes out in the wash. It is what it is. Um, You're very good at that as well. Like, And the whole aim is to make it sustainable and make it something that you're going to keep doing for two, three, yeah. four, five years, right? Like yeah. if you miss all of these things and then – your partner hates you or you fucking, <laughs> God forbid, like you get divorced or your kids hate you because you don't fucking spend any time or energy with them. Then obviously this isn't sustainable. Yeah. So you've been really good at like sharing the difficulties that come along with that, but then also yeah. being really transparent with like, I'm taking this day off or I take heaps of days off and this has been yeah. really good for everything. And I think the, the other thing with, with my missus uh, that's kind of come up a couple of times is she sort of highlights the number of times when I'm having to like open new accounts or, or you know, take up redeposit offers. There's been a few times, not arguments, but we've had sort of some harder conversations where she kind of highlights and she's like, I'm always seeing money go out. When does the money come back in? And it's it's kind of sitting down and reinforcing being like, well, here's the spreadsheet. Have a look at the accounts, right? Like, like the balance. This, yeah, yeah this, this account balance was $500 last week and now it's at $1,200, right? That's where the money's gone. I don't want to withdraw it because there's a risk that I lose my promos, da, 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 da. But then even... Even as recently as like two weeks ago, um, one of the smaller bookies, Chase Bet, I'd open them up, used like a deposit offer, blew the account up, immediately lost promos. And I'm like, I haven't done anything except turn the bonuses over. Like, thanks. But I put 200 bucks into that account and I pulled nearly 1500 bucks out of it. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, there so there is. you go. There's yeah, yeah. the money coming back out. This yeah, is what yeah. happens. When I lose an account, money yeah, yeah. money comes out. It becomes liquid again and, right? we, and we can either use it or and, reinvest. And it. in like, theory, like if you really had to, you, like you, you got into this because you took out money anyway. Like you can take yeah. it out, but like that's a risk. Yeah, obviously. Of, of course. Like there's but, always a risk and you, you don't want to do it ideally. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of guys in the community having the same conversations with their girlfriends, with their wives or whatever it is, of where course. it's like, you know, hey babe, I'm putting another 500 bucks in to open two more accounts and take up some deposit offers and help my sustainability. And she's like, well, but no, like, why are you spending another 500 bucks on this? I thought you just spent a thousand dollars on platinum. Like yeah, why are you spending yeah. another $500 or, or yeah, yeah. that kind of thing? Um, and between me and my missus, it's just always been communication. It's like, if she has an issue, I'm like, well, you need to let me know. Cause I, I'll either, I'll either fix it. I'll explain why I can't fix it. Or I'll realize, yeah, okay, I've done something wrong and I need to, like kind of adjust and change what I'm doing and maybe it means you know taking her out for a weekend or it means spending a bit of money fixing the car up or it means doing something for the kids and that sort of stuff to be like hey the money is there it's not gone it hasn't disappeared I'm not gambling it all away um and uh, not not to go too far down that rabbit hole but part of that does come from her knowing my old man who is like still like just a chronic gambler I mean I met up Anzac Eve I had dinner with him at um, at the local pub, you know, we sat down and watched the first quarter of the game. And um, when I first got there, I walk into the sports bar and, hey, dad, how are you going? What's going on? And he goes, oh, can you just double check this for me? And he's got a ticket, like a tab ticket in his hand. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And it was like a, like an all up thing. And he'd been like, right, this horse replace, this horse replace, this horse replace. And he's like, I'm pretty sure that this is, this is paid off. Like this has happened. I'm like, okay, cool. So he takes, we have a look at it. I'm like, yep, they've all got the place. Like this one paid four bucks the place. This one paid two bucks. This one paid two bucks. And he's like, okay, awesome. Takes it up, cashes in. It's like 200 bucks he's made. And he's like, yes. You know, and he's, he's like, I'm paying for dinner and da, da, da. And I'm like, I, so the first thing I said to him, I'm like, dad, how many of these are you put on? 
And he's like, well, it doesn't matter. I'm paying for dinner. I'm like, dad, how many of these have you put on? As in today? Like just, just today, right? Yeah, like yeah. how many? And he's like, oh, just two. And I'm like, okay, so you haven't won 200 bucks. You won like 170, 140 or whatever it was. Like you'd put on 30 bucks each or something. So I'm like, so you haven't won 200 bucks. Like, cause you lost the other one and you get your money back on this one as part of the payout. So you're not 200 bucks up. Like you're only 150 bucks up. I said, how many of these did you put on last week that didn't pay off? How many of these did you put on the week before that didn't pay off, right? And for him, it's that's how he wants to spend his money and he hangs out with the bar flies and they all have a, a good crack and all this, right? And it's like, he's in his 70s. Like, he doesn't care. He's like, whatever. But my missus knows him and what he gets up to. And so when I sit down and I'm like, I'm going to spend my Saturdays and my youngest daughter, she's like, Oh, you doing horsey betting. And now I've been very conscious of being like, no, nah, I don't really do that anymore. Sweetie. We don't put the races on the TV. You know, if I'm sitting there with my laptop, I'll have something that I can alt tab away to. So I'm like, Oh no, I'm just doing some work and stuff like that. Because it's then seeped into like, wow, my eight year old daughter is now like, Oh, my dad spends his weekends like punching, the horses. punching on the horses. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, but that's not the impression that I want any of my kids to have. I don't want any of but them. That's to not think, what you're doing. No, no, no. Yeah. It's yeah. Not. They're too young and to understand that. They, they're too young to understand what's actually happening. And like, yeah. uh, you know, my older kids, I'm, you know, I've spoken to them about, it. I'm like, this is what I do. Here's how it works. You guys are never going to do it. Right. In terms of like gambling and all this sort of stuff. You know, we'll talk about it when you're old enough to open accounts and all this sort of stuff. Cause I want to make sure, I mean, I, cause you want to use them. Maybe, <laughs> but um, no, but I like, like I, I legit hate it. And we're kind of going off on a tangent, but like, I, I like even just Twitter recently, like I'm a massive fan of track my Brown, right? We talked about him on the 12 month pod and he is like going really hard this year. Like he is. I reckon he, he's fully destroyed Nathan Brown. He rep. is, he is absolutely savage Nathan yeah. Brown. I don't know how, if you're no, up to date with him. Yeah, it's been like he has ripped this guy apart and, but his posts have now gone from like, oh, well, here's another losing multi for Brownie. It's like, this shit is toxic. Get it off TV. Yeah. Here's a petition, sign it. Yeah, and yeah. people are going at him yeah. and like, you know, I don't know if he's going to ever see this or if he knows who I am or anything we'll like that. But there are, there are so many, there are so many times when like I see his posts and he, him and I end up fucking tag teaming people where someone jumps in and it's like, oh, it's just a bit of fun. Who cares? And both of us are just like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Right. Because we're on the same boat. And it's for me, I think it's fucking awesome that someone outside of this community sees the same shit that we do. And it's like the battle. initial, not many people see it like that. A hundred percent. But people see it that way and look at it and you know between my wife and my kids and all this sort of stuff i'm now like hyper hyper conscious of how much of it is yeah. actually in front of them and actually educating them about how match betting works how we use it to our advantage how we make money off it but also why gambling is just absolute bullshit and people should not do it and it's bad and as much as we love my old man as much as we love poppy and you know we want to spend time with him and all this sort of stuff it's like i'm not bringing my kids to the golf club to sit in the sports bar and watch you play you know fucking trackside and keno and put a quaddy on and cheer horses home i'll sit there and do it with you and have a beer and all this sort of stuff because i want to enjoy as much time with my dad as i can but i don't want my kids around it yeah. which well, is fair enough you'd be fun at parties wouldn't you pete <laughs> <laughs> It's literally what they'd say to that though. But it's so it's so spot on. Like yeah. everything you just said there is just spot on. Like the reason why people are fucked financially, a lot of males get to 30, 40 is because of punting mm. and because of just thinking that it's okay to waste 100 a week and then 500 a week and then 1,000 a week once they earn more money. The, the big, sh I don't know what it was like sort of in the before time. I know it's, it's you know, kind of the last thing I'll, I'll cover off. Uh, obviously conscious of your time. I think we've got some tips coming out tonight, so you can go and do some research. But um <laughs> Send Lenny on his it's, mate. it's a little bit it's a little bit different for my old man because he's he's very analogue, right? Like he will go down to the golf club or the RSL or whatever it is. He'll go to the ATM, he'll take money out. Yeah. He'll go and he'll fill out the you know, he'll use his fucking grey lead and fill out the form and he'll you know, he's got the paper there and he's checking the form guide and the histories and all this sort of stuff and you know, picks his quaddy or whatever he's doing, goes up, gives the ticket to the lady, gives her the 50 bucks, watches it all go through, right? And so he is very conscious about how much money he spends on it. And he's always been adamant. It's like, you know, he lives within his means. This is what I do for entertainment. I don't go to parties. I don't go to festivals. I'm not going to the movies, right? This is what I do. I hang out with my mates and I punt on the horses. If I lose, I lose. And that kind of formed part of my, 
you know, sitting around gambling, right? And I've, I've said it from the start with you guys. People that gamble within their means, if you want to put five bucks on a multi on Friday night, to me, that's no different than buying a pack of cigarettes. I think the big shift and the big change in what's happened with the amount of online sports betting that is now possible, the fact that it's all just immediately linked to your bank account or your debit card, and at the push of a button, you can just drain money into it and you can throw it on and you watch the green ticks go up and then it disappears and it's like well you never really had that cash in your hand it was all just numbers on a screen i think it makes it far easier for people to spend and the most insane thing that i saw on a uh on a instagram clip that came up over in the the states um some of their poker machines you can now put your bank card into the poker machine and do bank transfers into the machines so you don't even have to get up like in the casino you don't have to get up out of the chair it's one of the casinos the in in australia you're only, there's no cash at the casino anymore that's insane you're and if you like deletion deletion of cash makes you not understand or appreciate money it's yeah. just that regardless of what you're spending it on if you have to pull 50 bucks out of your wallet and it's a $50 note versus you just clicking a button. I don't care who you are. You're going to be more likely to spend the $50 on your, so on, the, your on your screen rather than picking it out of your pocket. So the perfect example of that, that's funny that you bring up cash, right? I got a, I got a hundred bucks cash in my wallet. I reckon I've had this hundred bucks cash in, in my wallet and my phone here for probably three months. And I've bought like tanks of petrol. I've gone shopping. I've, you know, paid for my Mikey to travel in, all of that sort of stuff. And I just do it all by tapping my phone. It's just like tap and go, tap and go, tap and go. Tap. It's like sitting here now consciously thinking about it. I don't know when I'm going to spend that $100 cash yeah. because there's a mindset thing around having to take $100 cash out, hand it over, get 50 bucks change, put that back. Like it's, it's a very different experience than just being like, oh, it's 50 bucks, boop, and off you go. And that's what online, that's what... The apps are doing that's what online gambling is doing is just the push of a button yeah they say oh you know choose your own deposit limit and it's like well that's great i'll just set it to two and a half grand for the day and like drain my whole bank account like what are you going to do to stop me like you don't really give a shit like you to take my money that's why brownie's getting thrashed online at the moment because everyone's starting to realize just how bullshit it all is which yeah. is they good a lot of people still do it though and they don't they don't stick up for track my brown but a lot of people are waking up to it you're right yeah um mm -hmm. fully Lenny, do you have any questions? Or do you want me to ask you a question about Pete? Yeah, go for it. Or you first. No, go ask, ask me a question. I just wanted to hear your thoughts on like when you first saw him. Yeah. I know we kind of touched on this before, but did you think he would be yeah, I, 50K? <laughs> I haven't told you this, but I borderline didn't want to work with you. <laughs> because <laughs> I just... I, I just, just you, kind of, you didn't say that, but you were very like, fuck, I'm not sure this is going to work sort of thing where you are. Yeah, like... Yeah just because I didn't think you had what it takes and like what it's like some of the comments I'd seen you put in the discord and what I've seen so far oh this is prior to joining yeah prior yeah, to joining yeah, yeah that's right um yeah, not after. that came from like sharing converse like self self-doubt messages from you to JP like yeah. you know is Before, it, it and just comments know, how does it work is this going to be worth it like oh man like yeah. it's a lot of you know the, all the things that you've already discussed like just pure limiting beliefs yeah. on yourself not on lenny nothing and lenny's like well man like I'm, Jeez, I'm, none of the <laughs> none of the guys that have joined have like had like as many limiting beliefs as you had yeah so it was obviously going to be but a task for lenny yeah like, we've told people they're not suitable and you we were never going to let lenny if he it was never that level of discussion but if it got to that we would have gone into bat for you and actually <laughs> made, sure you, it made sure you worked too, with him but too bad break him there have been people that we've just said no we don't want to work with you sort of thing so yeah but Lenny knew, well, at least he assumed it was going to be like a, a task. But how is that? Oh, well, unfolded? then then when I met you, like the we had our onboarding. I think I met you previously to that as well. Yeah, I think we'd said hi a couple of times. And yeah, come in for the um, previous podcasts and had a few chats. But yeah, in the in the couple of like weeks leading up to our onboarding session, like fully just changed my idea on like what you were here to do. Yeah, um, and I think that was definitely a change you made yourself it wasn't just me realizing that you were actually a different person than what i think you were i think that's you actually made that change and i've noticed that change yeah um which is basically everything we've been talking about yeah that's perfect it. Any, any more questions no was that was that your question yeah okay yeah any more questions for us no nah, boys i, I think there? i think to, to sum it all up like 
again, anyone that goes back and watches like that first Zoom call update, you know, where I talked about my old man for the first time yeah. and, oh, yeah, I'll put 2K in. If I get three times my money back over the next 12 months, that'd be great. And We were laughing then, at that. And then, yeah, and then the, the, th- the three-month update when, you know, I was talking about I'd made a 1000 bucks a month and talked about some of the other services out there and, you know, the way the community was different in the system. And then, yeah, I haven't gone back and watched the 12-month update, so I'm probably going to give that a watch on the train on the way home and just see kind of how I think my body language and my mindset like you guys have said is probably a bit different because at the time I was preparing myself to kind of be like oh this is the end like fully that was easily the vibe that I got when I was taking notes yesterday um and then for anyone that's kind of gone through the journey with me and watched it and seen today like I appreciate any feedback or any comments that people want to give me or if anyone's got any questions sort of having seen this now and maybe sort of didn't realize that this is where I'm at and this is where my mindset's at and this is where my life's at and you know people maybe had the wrong impression or maybe did think that I was kind of just going through the motions with it all or whatever it is and hanging on to it it's like nah man it's completely different and I said it last time and I'll say it again and I'll probably say it in you know six 12 months whenever we sit down for another podcast like I'll never be able to thank you boys enough for just how different my life's become because of this community and because of everything that you boys do. So thank you. No, you're welcome. So yeah, you've done it. hundred percent. Like it's all you and, and a lot of people that say stuff like that. Like it, at the end of the day, it's you like the opportunities that are presented to you and have been there for the last two years have been presented and are there for thousands and thousands of other people. And yeah, they're there for those that want to take them. And you've obviously taken it with both hands and you've fully changed your life. You're, you're on the trajectory to make more money. You're way more confident. You are backing yourself in. You've lost a shit ton of weight. Like there are so many positives that you've gained from taking a risk, but also like backing yourself in and and, and saying, you know, I am the, you know, you said, I know what I'm capable of. I just got to fucking go and do it. And you have done it and you're going to keep doing it. And yeah, it's been so sick to see you, even knowing you on a personal level before you joined, like, the guy that you that I first saw when I walked in to that uh, debt collection agency versus <laughs> the guy that's sitting in front of me now, it's like, it's just no comparison. And yeah. yeah, it's so sick to see what you've done. And what you've done is just what anybody in this community can do if they want to. And I hope from people that have watched this and all the other ones, they draw inspiration from that because, yeah, I, I'm really proud to see what you've done. You should be proud of yourself. And I'm so excited to see what you do over the next 12 months and beyond. Like it's going to be... Yeah, the next one's going to be ridiculous. Yeah, it's going to be pretty insane. Um, the only other thing I will say, if there is anyone out there that hasn't signed up yet, friends, family, whatever it is, um, hit me up for the affiliate code Pete. Just get <laughs> yourself a little, little something, something there. If you, if you watch, if you, <laughs> if you've watched all of this though, like dead set though, like if you've watched all of this and you're not part of it, like, man, they, no, but honestly, like? honestly, I, I've, I've tried doing it in my friend group. Um, no, no, you have to, it, you can't, you can't convince people to do it. They have to want to do it. And it, I think watching this and seeing you, if so that's hard. not enough to motivate you to go and do it, then maybe you never will. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. It's, it's one of those things where it's like sometimes, you know, talking to the people closest to you, you know, they can't see the forest for the trees. So if there's anyone out there, you've had a hard time convincing mates or whatever it is to actually get on board with you. It's like, don't worry about it. Show them my, no, no, no. I wouldn't even say, don't worry about it. I'm like, show them my journey. Yeah. Literally yeah. go back. Like just say, Hey, yeah, spend, spend it, an though. afternoon. Spend an afternoon, watch these five podcasts, yeah. put them at, you know, 1.25 speed if you have to. Go back through and watch them. And like you guys have said, go and watch the guy that two years ago was sitting back going, oh, I hope I can make a couple of bucks off this and, you know, take my family on a holiday to now sitting here going, no, this is a full-time income and I'm going to make a shitload of money. And not only am I making a shitload of money, it's like I've advanced myself professionally. I'm getting back in the gym and I'm dedicating myself to doing that properly. I'm using the you know mental application and skills that I've learned in here I understand the importance of having a coach and a mentor and having someone who's been there and done it to show me how to do it properly I understand the weaknesses within myself about self-motivation and about you know setting the right level of discipline to do things properly and so having a partner or a training partner whatever it is to hold you accountable to that is important I understand the importance of and you know it's the big thing that I mentioned at the start humbling yourself and saying i don't know how to do this help me and that's if anybody takes anything away from this if you are 
wanting to go to the next level, the first step that you have to take is to admit that you don't know what the fuck you're doing and that you need to reach out to the people who do. And until you can do that, until you can confidently say to someone, you know more than I do, please teach me, you're never going to be mentally in a position to learn it. If you go into think someone, something thinking, well, yeah, I pretty much know how to do this. You know, you show me a couple of extra things. You won't do it properly. You won't. You have to fully, whether it's within yourself, whether it's a conversation with one of these boys, you have to almost go through what I went through with Lenny and like break down and kind of open yourself up to it and be like, yeah, I have no fucking idea. Help me. And you get the help and then you come out of it on the other side and it's like, let's fucking go. Yeah, well said. I don't think... We can say anything else to, to wrap it up apart from that. But if you watch all of this like dead set and you want to make the change, like it's on you. The path is here. So go and make shit happen. And we'll see you in 12 months time. Easy. For the three-year update. Thanks very much, boys. <laughs> nice. Thank see you. you later. Cheers. So if you want to learn what match betting is and how to get started, there's a free course linked directly in the YouTube description. It goes for 60 minutes. It contains a number of videos explaining how it all works and how you can get started for free today.